Mm. Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. I hope everybody is having a fantastic little day. Uh, welcome to the most watched show on the planet, uh, Apostate Prophet and David Wood. Uh, we had a slight delay because I had to uh, quickly check on my cam girls and see if they were... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we had to slap them hoes. <laughs> oh boy. You know, uh, you know it's funny. I I, I want to say this like nine million times, but it's like in reality, the best thing that has ever happened to the Tate brothers is that they got banned from social media because that allowed them all their content was taken down. And that allowed them to sort of reinvent themselves as, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you look at the stuff that they were saying beforehand, it's like some of the most evil and misogynistic stuff. ever. They're, I mean, they're talking about like like choking girls during sex and, you know, all this stuff. And uh, and and then, of course, Andrew Tate saying that if you're a woman and you get raped, you bear response. You're the responsible one for if you, you know, depending on what the situation was and stuff like that. But if you were in that situation, it's your fault. And so th these are the kinds of things that he got the they got banned for, but that allowed them to reinvent themselves and come back. It was just because of our empowering message to to children and young men. That's why they came at us. And it it allowed people. It, it's basically only clips resurfaced because everything just got mass taken down and only clips that people were circulating resurfaced. And then they could just say, no, 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 that was taken out of context. I was saying something perfectly wonderful back then. So it's actually like this was the best thing that could have happened to them. If they were, if all their content was still up right now and they couldn't say it was taken out of context, these guys would be, these guys would be completely uh, obliterated right now. But I mean, yeah, it, so, it works on people who are right now uh, sympathetic to our, toward these two individuals. I mean, um, I see it all the time. People say stuff like, oh, you know, they are just being targeted because they are uh, challenging the system and they have uh, such nice things to say to, uh, to, to the younger generation especially to young men they are such a motivation and i'm i'm thinking what are you talking about i mean have you have you sat down to just look a little bit into what they actually stand for what they have done so far in their lives what they have said online so far yeah and and earlier so before they got shut down all their stuff is about controlling women and using yeah. women to make money. And I mean, you've got the clip with, with Andrew Tate saying that he owed money to these crime bosses and stuff, and they're going to kill him if he doesn't come up with the money. And so he, he said, I looked around for it. I had 70,000, but I needed a hundred thousand. So I looked around at what do I have that I can sell? And the only thing that I had to sell was my girlfriend's. And it's like, this is like evil, sick stuff, but everything is about pimping and controlling women and using women for pornography to make money. And then the methodology of how to, to, to manipulate these women who had no interest in doing that and who thought it was gross to be webcam girls, how you, uh, how you manipulate them into doing it. Everything is about that. And all the, all of the hard work aspects, get off your lazy butt and get it done. That stuff was in reference to, hey, you need to really go out there and work hard at getting these girls to fall in love with you so you can manipulate them into becoming yeah. your webcam yeah. girls. But you have to work hard. You have to hustle. I mean, he's sitting there and I sit there and I sit there and I'm the one texting uh, these guys who are who are looking at these looking at these webcam girls. I'm the one sitting there texting these messages, getting these guys all turned on. And I get, you know, five hundred dollars out of them. It's like but he's 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 saying this is what you have to do. You have to hustle. So the message about working hard and stuff was in reference to building your porn kingdom. And then they all get banned and then they get blasted in the media and then they come back. And yes, we were just empowering young men to work hard and so on. <laughs> And then and then everyone goes, oh, really? That's why they were attacked. That's why they're getting banned for their empowering message to young guys and for for going against wokeism. Really? It's, it's just like when Sneeko says I was banned for speaking the truth. Yeah. And he was actually banned for uh, for, I don't know, sexual harassment, uh, implying sexual assault toward another actual female YouTuber. Okay, uh, you, you shared that clip. Where did I see that? Where did I see some really that? dehumanizing stuff. There, I mean, lots of people uh, posted about it afterwards, uh, after it happened. I only became aware of it um, 
when a few weeks ago when I when I when I commented on it and when I shared it. But um, he apparently uh, is live reviewing this 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 woman who is a YouTuber, and he's annoyed by the by the stuff that she says. Uh, and then he starts acting like, you know, she just needs to, uh, <clears throat> and starts acting out these, these things and, and yeah, I saw it. It's pretty acting, sick. Out, acting out her being scared like, <clears throat> like that. And then, and then he says, and now they will see this and they will call me an incel and what, whatever, you know, <laughs> and then he just repeats those things. And that's the kind of stuff that got Sneeko banned. And now he's going around saying they are after me because I speak the truth because they don't like the truth. <laughs> Lucky. It's. I mean, it's awesome. I mean, guys, if if people wonder why we're going to, uh, you know, keep addressing these things as new videos and new situations unfold with, you know, the Sneakos and the Tate brothers of the world, uh, there's a one. You have the Dawa guys who are now going all in on this approach. Um, hey, this is this is the direction we need to go in, uh, celebrating these new influencers and so on. So they're using this for Dawa purposes. But there is even even if this had nothing to do with Dawa, there is this other side of the story. Like if you can just mass manipulate people at this level this quickly, like you can just you can you could spend years of your life talking about porn and abusing women and all this stuff. And then just turn around and say, nope, I never said that. It's all out of context. And uh, and I, I'm just a champion of, you know, the anti-woke movement and so on. And people fall for that. That's pretty, uh, that's something to be concerned about. That now any group, you can just, you can jump into any group, be the hero of that group, lie about everything you've ever done, everything you've ever stood for, completely turn your turn it around overnight just by saying, ah, now I'm part of this group. You might want to be aware of that because that's probably going to lead to some problems beyond uh, beyond Andrew T. It's true, and to me, it's not even about Islam anymore. Like um, I commented very briefly on Andrew Tate before he even converted to Islam um, a few times, and I just I was just like, this guy is a complete idiot, uh, waste of time, you know, whatever it is. I just made these comments and moved on. After he converted to Islam, I still didn't say much about him, but. As I found out more, and as the case evolved, I realized this is some really messed up stuff. And people, people do not dig. They don't go into the detail, into all the information that is not out there. They just take this guy uh, by his word because he is a storyteller. You know, you have to give him that. He's a good storyteller. He captivates yep. the audience by by making up stories and uh, and changing the information that he presents, by the way, every single time he, t t he tells the story where you can clearly tell that the guy's lying. Mm -hmm. But he is a good storyteller, you know, that and 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 people uh, like listening to such people and don't like questioning such people uh, further beyond their one word and don't like digging for all the details. I look through Twitter and I see that nobody is really doing it even the people who dislike him and what he does severely many of them don't talk about the things that he actually did and the evidence of everything that exists the evidence that we have online that we have always had the evidence that the roman uh, the, the romanian uh, prosecution published and leaked to the media all of it is accessible on the internet but it's not out there people are not doing it so i started getting uh, a little bit maybe even to a level obsessive about finding every single thing that is out there to find about Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate and compiling everything and tweeting about some of them and publishing them because it, it, it's beyond Islam. I mean, I'm not even connecting it with Islam anymore at, at, uh, at this point when I just talk about Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate because it, it is just about human trafficking and about how such uh, horrendous people can just influence such audiences, influence the masses, and even captivate people. And this is what disgusts me about this whole thing the most. Even influence people who have for years said that they are all about family values and about uh you know preventing and fighting degeneracy and you know fighting uh you know exploitation and stuff like that and these same people now go around saying well andrew tate is such a good guy such a good influence hero and this and that and i'm just i'm sitting there and it, it hurts it honestly hurts it's, it's a, i mean it's it's absolutely amazing because i mean if 
everyone is watching. If you can actually get away with this stuff, my goodness. I mean, take take someone that someone is like, uh, take someone who's you know lived a pretty degenerate. You can take someone who's lived a degenerate life doing horrible things. Like like so like like uh, in the news earlier, you've got the Hunter Biden stuff. I don't know what the issue is. I know that like he's been smoking crack and banging prostitutes for for many years. This is not, oh, I'm looking down on him. That's like, like I mean, people know about drugs in my family and stuff like that. So I could be like, yeah, I understand what happens when you, you know, get addicted to drugs, especially if you're born rich with a, you know, silver spoon in your mouth and you could get away with it for you. You can spend your entire life doing that. But notice, I mean, so this Hunter Biden has been smoking crack and banging prostitutes for, for years. Imagine if he were to just come out tomorrow and say, the media is attacking me for, for being such a good influence and for my good influence on young men. And all I've ever said, all, all this entire, my entire life has just been telling, I've been going around telling young men to be strong and to stand up for what's right and to, to make something of themselves and to stop sitting around playing video games all the day. And that's why the media is attacking me. And just, you think that that's insane. There's no, there's a 0% chance that that would ever work. And you look at Andrew Tate and say, no, Hunter, you might want to, you might want to pull that card because it works. You can actually be successful. You could be successful at that and just make some videos about uh, Hunter Biden could just make some videos uh, telling young men, Hey guys, stop playing the video games, get off your butt, work hard, get a Bugatti. And uh, I don't know, it seems like you'd have millions of people going, they're just coming after him for his empowering message to young men. Uh, it's just, my goodness. That, that's also the issue. I, I mean, I haven't been exactly mincing my words when it comes to uh, Jordan Peterson and calling him out on hypocrisy or, or other people uh, for that matter. But I recently um, also called him out on Twitter. I don't know if you've seen that. I saw that. You, you called everyone out for being... Yeah. Yeah. Four people, uh, Jordan Peterson, Matt Walsh, uh, Ben Shapiro, and Michael Knowles. Because every day, every single day, I log on and I read um, and I see these people talk about random crap that, that doesn't even concern anyone, that doesn't even you know make it to the, to the public light, but they somehow dig it out and criticize it and talk about it. Jordan Peterson makes a huge fuss about uh, a... <laughs> a woman on a on a magazine because she's not fit and makes a huge deal out of this and it turns into a into a huge huge international uh, issue and all of these people talk forever about grooming and call everything that uh you know th that has something to do with 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 a younger audience grooming and so on but then they are all suddenly so quiet when it comes to Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate, who have a huge overlapping audience with Jordan Peterson, Matt Walsh, Ben Shapiro, and Michael Knowles, coincidence, and uh, and and who who do some extremely horrible things that are that should be against everything these guys stand for, who do who, who groom little. Uh, girls who groom young women who go out and uh, and trick women uh, into online porn who assign overseers to these women and make them forcibly constantly produce online porn steal their money be, uh, threaten them with beatings and uh, killing tell, and killing you saw you saw killing. the one from from yeah. Milana and so on we'll uh, we'll and kill killing. you you're going yeah. over the balcony if you don't get this out right now yeah and killing and and they teach other people to do this as well and say you you should do is you have to you have to uh, constantly have sex with them and subdue them and do this and that that to them uh what 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 else was there? Yeah, but by the way, that's actually that's another that's another issue because Tate's defense in court is going to be I was just playing a character for all that stuff. I wasn't really doing all that stuff I said I was doing to women. I was just I was just playing a character for videos. And it's like, okay, so best case best case scenario, if we believe that you were lying and all of that, you're still training people to do that, right? You're teaching young men this is how you make it in the world you make it on you know with girls uh stripping in front of uh webcams so you can make money so it it's like uh, okay so you weren't actually doing stuff you're just you're just lying to get other people to do this stuff and it's like that's, that's not exactly better their sport yeah and, and and so seeing that these that these specific people on the conservative side of the spectrum are completely quiet about this. 
So the, uh, the the point the point to be made there was if if Tate, which I don't even know what it, I'm not convinced that Tate has any actual positions beyond whatever is most convenient for him at influencing funny. an audience at, at any time. Yeah, whatever's gonna whatever's gonna get him money at any given point. Um, but uh, yeah, if he were if he were on some opposite uh, side of the aisle on some of these issues, and he weren't. If he weren't anti woke, if he were the exact same person, but he were he was defending, you know, the woke side or something like that, they'd probably be blasting him as like public enemy number one. They would be all over him, yeah, all the time. Yeah, that's true. That's correct. They would be all over him. But since since the uh, the political sides are twisted, and since they have overlapping fan bases. They're acting yeah. like they're they they're acting like they have no idea that this is actually going on. <laughs> it's, it is like yeah, the, this is what everyone is talking about right now. But but uh, so to be fair, Matt Walsh, I think is the only one out of those four that I mentioned who actually uh, criticized Andrew Tate in the past severely and also told his own uh, viewers not to follow this guy and not to take him uh, seriously. But that's it. He left it at that. Uh, in in my opinion, that is not enough because you have so much time to deal with uh, all kinds of minor issues on the left, but that is all you are doing for that. Michael Knoll said some uh, harsh things about him six months ago and hasn't uttered a single word about him since since then, as far as I can see. Jordan Peterson mentioned him once during a podcast fleetingly as a narcissistic individual who uh, you know who emerges in a society where morals are you know. Uh, disappearing, mm -hmm. and once only answered a question for like one minute where he said, you know, I, I don't like pimps, but I don't know enough about him to comment further on him. That's all he said. The same guy who tweets about uh, how women should appear on sports magazines. Uh, <laughs> and Ben yeah. Shapiro, he is just, he criticizes rap singers, women who make songs that he does, he finds inappropriate so harshly but he thinks this whole Andrew Tate thing is just, you know, slightly problematic. Yeah, but whatever. And I can't take yeah. it. I can't tolerate that. Yeah, I mean, on the one hand, you want to say, okay, these guys have their stuff that they focus on. But it seems like a lot of what they... I mean, yeah, you you don't have to go over everything. Like, people ask us, why do you focus on Islam? Well, that, that's what we're... That, that's a lot of what we focus on because there's not enough people focusing on some of these problems. Um, so, you, so we get the kind of, why don't you respond to everything else? And so, on the one hand, you, you'd want to say, okay, you know, Ben Shapiro and all these guys, they don't have to respond to everything that's happening. But, yeah, th this is such a huge thing that's going on. If you're... If, you're re if you really want to address problems in society and so on then i mean that's a big one why are you wor why are you worried about notice it's the reverse of what like tate's fans are saying if you say look at what tate did they go ah but what about cardi b but like the uh the conservative commentators are going look at cardi b but we'll ignore what you know andrew tate's going uh what andrew tate's doing and so uh it's this weird situation but yeah it does seem like it's just we don't want to upset a fan base in this sort of loose confederation when we're all focused on um, whatever they're focused on. Like if, if their main concern is like trans trans stuff going on, it seems like they want to keep that alliance going on. But notice that I mean that the ongoing concern here is if you're gonna let Tate slide on all these things despite the fact of all these you know millions of people rallying around him and. You know, he's sort of connected to like the Daniel Hakikachu stuff. And you guys are, ah, well, we're going to focus on the trans stuff because they're going after kids. Well, I don't know that Daniel Hakikachu camp is going after kids, too. So if you really want to keep if you want to keep kids safe, you probably want to deal with the people who are trying to uh, restart up child marriage globally. That might be a priority here, but yeah. it's just not. Yeah, yeah. Some people mentioned uh, Candace Owens. Candace Owens actually uh, defended and praised Andrew Tate. Uh, mm -hmm. Tim Pool um, 
joined in in the conspiracy that this is just a crackdown on some uh, great guy for who speaks out against the the the, the agenda. But I'm, I'm not even taking those people seriously. I don't think they have actual values. Uh, to be very honest, uh, I'll say that every day. I don't think Tim Pool and Kenneth Owens have actual values that stand for anything. I'm specifically talking about these other people, uh, and I'm saying that only for myself. I don't want to speak in David's name here, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm specifically talking and pointing at these other more conservative value guys like Jordan Peterson, Matt Walsh, Ben Shapiro, and the others, because I, I would expect them to say something. You know? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of it in terms of, you know, connected to what we were talking about earlier, that the best thing that happened to these guys was that the internet scrubbed their stuff uh, and then stuff only circulated as little clips, at which they could then claim is out of context. Because keep in mind, most of us weren't paying attention to Andrew Tate. So we're, we're most of we're most uh, people who are commenting on Andrew Tate right now following him beforehand. No. So when they when they want to know, hey, what's up with Andrew Tate? And it's like the BBC attacking him, but they have overlapping fan bases with Andrew Tate. And they all they hear from that overlapping fan base is it's just his empowering message to young people. And they're just upset that he's going against wokeism. Oh, he's a good guy. Then it seems like, oh, he's he's on our side against wokeism. So, yeah, he can't be all that bad. Not realizing it's I don't know. It's like a joke. I can't even tell what that guy I can't even tell what he actually believes, because when you can when you can do a video of course i'm 100 percent a misogynist uh and then another video where you're being attacked for it i'm not a misogynist i love women i will defend women to the death and blah 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 and uh hey is that your website and is that your video is that your method no no it's not and you look no, at another no, no. video of course that's my website and my video of course it is right and it's like i at, at, there comes a point where i'm like maybe you believe some of what you're saying i have no idea because i can't tell because you act exactly the same whether you're lying or telling the truth. And so there's just no telling the difference. But uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I get it when someone actually believes that he's being attacked by the matrix and so on. It's just uh, if you're not going to do the slightest bit of real investigating, probably keep your mouth shut about it. Um, yeah, you've, got, yeah. you've got all these people like rushing to his defense and they clearly haven't looked at it at all. Yeah. The only thing that surprised me a little bit was that, um, Lauren Southern, um, and she was problematic to me. I, I, I've always had this, um, I like what she's doing, but I also don't because she was like hanging around with, with really extreme political uh, uh, political movements and stuff. But um, I think I kind of always viewed her as a genuine person. And recently she had this big change in her views and she actually started speaking out against this whole, um, this misogyny under the guise of, uh, you know, Man is fair and men's rights and stuff. And she started criticizing and going against her own crowd and also calling out these these people who uh you know get close to Islam because they hate women so much. And I don't know, that, that that's quite impressive to me. But yeah. Go ahead. Do you want to say something? Oh yeah. So I guess what the point there as far as her being willing to say something, she probably has an overlapping fan base with them. And so yeah. I guess what you're saying is She's got an overlapping fan base, and yet she was willing to speak out. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I don't think the next six months are going to be boring because this is a this is there's stuff that happens every day, and then we're yeah. going to get the Tate the Andrew Tate trial, and uh, <laughs> it's it's so weird. Still, every time anyone posts anything about Andrew Tate, you get all his fanboys. There is zero evidence against him. Like, where where have you been? How are you not looking? How are you not looking at all this stuff against him? Um, and what you find is they just listen to Andrew. T they just listen to Andrew Tate say there's no evidence against him, and they say okay, there's no evidence against him. But yeah, probably, probably the best witness uh, of what the actual state of the evidence is is the compulsive liar who is the one going to trial for this stuff. I mean, you can tell that these people are not even, um, that these people are just listening to the Tates and blindly taking whatever they are saying because um, like when the charges came out, one of the charges was that they hold those women, make them uh, create online content and steal their money. And Tristan Tate then made a tweet in which he completely um, misconstrued that for his own audience and said, they are saying, um, 
we make girls publish TikTok videos and take their uh, TikTok money? How much money could that possibly be, like in a, in a mocking way? And then people actually take that and come to me and say they're just charging them for taking the girls' TikTok money. Yeah. You are obviously parroting what you just heard him yeah. say, and that is not even true. That's not true at all. Like we have the evidence, the transcript which the prosecution released, where they specifically talk about many sources, including OnlyFans, TikTok, and other sources. You know, it's mm -hmm. and, and you you look are. at it. You look at it. Uh, like even that. Um, those those text messages from uh, what's her name, Luana and Georgiana, or Georgiana, or whatever. Uh, where they're saying this girl didn't put out her her quota of TikTok videos and they're going to kill her if, and they're going to kill her and they're going to, if, An if Andrew's, if Andrew finds out about it, you're going right over the balcony and stuff like that. Um, so they're threatening to kill this woman over a TikTok video. And so the taste now, what TikTok, what's that? The, the TikTok videos were a system for funneling people, uh, funneling people either to your only fans page or to Tate's war room and stuff like that. So either way they're continuing. So notice, they want the videos, the TikTok videos out there to the biggest population of people to funnel people to where you make uh, more money. And so that's part of the that's part of their entire system. It's like get your advertisement out there to get more people so you can make us more money. This is what we are talking about, what we have mentioned several times now. Um, this is actually one of the transcripts um, that the prosecution released to the press uh, and is roughly translated. Um, but here is and these are taken from 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 uh messaging apps including whatsapp um conversations between these people so luana is uh one of the two assistants of andrew tate and tristan tate and georgiana is the other one and these two are basically these uh these tyrannical overseers who make sure that the girls are doing everything right and keeping them in check and all that and uh yasmina here or just me now however you want to say it is one of the models who does uh online content and makes so, money. So to be clear, this would have been some woman that Andrew Tate messaged and uh, he starts messaging her about how he, you know, he really likes her and she falls in love with him and hey, come work for me. I mean, no, no, no. Come, uh, come out here so we can get married maybe and have a relationship and you'll be the one for me. And then, you know, a few months later, she's, uh, uh, she's, you know, his webcam girl and so on. Um, and then this is how this is how you get treated when you are on staff at Tate Brothers Enterprises. Yeah, yeah. And here you have, uh, here you see how it works internally. Luana says, uh, we split on OnlyFans. Look, this, this transcript especially explicitly mentions OnlyFans as a mm -hmm. source of income, right? Uh, G takes, oh, I'm not entirely sure what that, what that refers to. G takes, oh, uh, I take you. Maybe you're not listening because I will kill you. If we don't make money, that's what one of the women says to the model. The other one says, punch yourself in the mouth or punch yourself in the face until I arrive, because then I'll give you another 10, you lazy bastard. Uh, I will break you when I get there. The, the uh, model, go ahead. I just want to say, apparently all of this is because she didn't release a TikTok video the day before. Yeah, yeah. The model, Yasmina says, what did I do? Georgiana says, you have one hour and 10 minutes to disappear. And she says again, what did I do? And she says, better said, what didn't you do yesterday for an hour? You are 20% down four days since you posted. I'm waiting for yesterday's money. Uh, and then it says, well, if Andrew looks to see if you've posted TikToks, you won't even have time to pack. You're flying out of the balcony straight away. <laughs> this is actual, authenticated, uh, verified transcripts from the employees of Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate and, uh, and and one of the models. And you have plenty of these. They, this is only part of what they published to the press, what they gave to the press. They have everything. Uh, and you also have, I think this was here. Oh, here is, an, here is a piece of Andrew Tate where he says to one of the girls whom he approached first by saying, I will give you so much love. Just come and live uh, a wonderful life with me. Let us marry. I will take you to Romania and so on. He, he says, uh, you don't go anywhere without one of the three people. And she says, why are you so cold to me? You know, you can, you can clearly see that um, she's pointing out that he's being very cold to her because 
prior to this, before she got into the business, he lured her in by being this completely romantic. I thought we were lover. in love. Yeah. yeah I thought yeah, we were yeah. in love. Now, now, shocker, once uh, I got here, you've changed. Yeah. Then he says, Don't go alone without don't go out alone without telling me. Mall supermarket nowhere from now on. And she says, I told you I wanted to go alone. And she says, it's the last warning. This is only part of one uh, of the conversations where it gets uh, more intense, I think. But yeah, so this is how they <laughs> how they treated the people. But then commenters yeah, but there, are like there's are there's no evidence that Tate has done any of this stuff. Yeah. And then uh People comment on this stuff and they're like, but but the girls, they were not in cages. They didn't have chains attached to their legs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's wild, man. I mentioned I mentioned uh, if you watch Bruce Rivers. Uh, so he's a, an actual attorney. Um, he said that the standard definition of trafficking is that you're getting a woman into some uh, sex work or pornography or something like that. But it involves how you do it involves force, fraud, or coercion. That, yep. that, that those are the criteria. So if you hire a woman to do something, that's one thing. If you do it in such a way that involves force, fraud, or conversion or, or coercion, then it's sex trafficking. It's a different story. Um, but so notice when Tate says he's tricking these women into falling in love with him and getting them to leave their country and come to Romania in order to, you know, for a relationship, because he's really interested in them. Uh, and then he manipulates them into becoming webcam girls. That's fraud. That's fraud. The, the violent stuff, the threats and intimidation and so, so on, that's coercion. But the pretending to be in a relationship for, for you know, for purposes of profiting off these women's, uh, you know, pornography, if he was, if that involved fraud, then that's a crime. That's sex trafficking. Um, now the thing is, it would be hard to prove that someone was just just doing this to get a girl to become his webcam girl. In other words, if you were to go to court and say he pretended to love me in order to get me to become a webcam girl, that would be hard to prove because the guy could just say, "No, I did love, I did love her, I did love her," and then I changed my mind later and just wanted her to become my <laughs> webcam girl. It would be hard to prove in court that you were sex trafficking her and weren't actually in love with her, that it was just fraud. The problem for Andrew Tate is he made like a million videos saying that's what he was doing, right? So the and entire time he's doing it, he's saying it. He's saying, yes, I'm, I'm tricking these girls. I'm duping these girls. This is how you do it. You can absorb my methodology. So he's going to have to go to court and say, no, that wasn't my methodology. And by the way, that's why in the BBC interview, one, that's why the BBC uh, woman was asking him about that. She wanted him to say, yes, that's my method, because then he's guilty. That would be used in court. And that's why Andrew Tate knew, do not acknowledge that I was tricking these women. Don't do it, because if he acknowledges that, then that would be used in court. And so he had to deny, that's not my website. That's not my method, even though there are all these videos of saying that's his website and that's his method. But he's, he, was, he was getting ready for court. This is um, this graph is, uh, is is quite clear. It makes it quite simple. What David just described. Uh, so these are things that make it trafficking. And here it's it's like uh, the act of recruitment marked in their case by means of deception, such as uh, when they say, you know, uh, you are you are my one and only. I'm in love with you. Uh, I will take you there, and we will get married, and this and that. And it turns out that. Uh, the marriage is not taking place. Plus, uh, he was he said the same thing to all the other people just to get them there. So recruitment, deception for the purpose of sexual exploitation, specifically what he says as a result. And, and all of this done for monetary gain. This is, by definition, human trafficking, sex trafficking. And in Romania, Romania is quite familiar with this and they will handle this case accordingly. <laughs> yeah. So what Andrew Tate has been saying for years and what we have evidence of qualifies as human trafficking in multiple different ways. But his the people responding and defending him are like, ah, but it's not this other form of sex trafficking. <laughs> right. We agree it's not the same as taking a, you know, a six-year-old and putting her in a cage and so on. We agree it's not like it's not the same thing. Those are two different forms of sex trafficking. What do these forms of sex trafficking have in common? It's sex trafficking. That's what they have in common. They're different forms of the same thing. Well, let's listen to this very quickly where he explains it for everyone else and makes it very easy for us. And then we can finally look at the Tristan Tate review. What is that tank top? I was all about trying to get paid. 
Like my whole, I used sex as a tool to make women love me so they'd obey me and live in my house and make me money. That, that's what I wanted. So I was a pimp in that sense. Like I was yep. not trying to have sex with women. I was trying to get women to obey me. And I realized that's easier if they like to have sex with me. <laughs> if they don't like having sex with me, it's pretty hard to make them listen to me. Uh, <laughs> this guy thinks, he sits there and thinks, oh, I'm such a genius. I, I found this way to make, to make women work for me, not realizing that uh, he's, not, he, he's not the one who came up with this. People have done this for a long time and this is actually a crime and now he realizes yeah. this and tries to be like no no, no I, I was just i was just pretending i wasn't no no i, I never said that i no, that's not me <laughs> yeah notice it's this it's a similar thing where he apparently just doesn't know what breaking <laughs> the law is right it's like when all these all these videos where he says that uh hey instead of paying taxes on the money i just in, instantly put everything into bitcoin it's like you you don't know that that's illegal to that, that just putting your money into bitcoin does not mean that you don't have to pay taxes on it what? Uh, so that's a situation he just doesn't know what the law is and then he bab he, he just acknowledges all these laws that he's breaking for all these years and now he's going to have to go into court and say all that stuff was just a lie I made up all that stuff i wasn't doing any of it they're wolf of me did not get a girl to work for you having fun so the recruit language alert well, it's an atheist channel, so. The process is, the same as the PhD course. You message them on Instagram. The PhD course is my recruitment system. I don't mention webcam until after I've had sex with the girl. Okay, so this is just another version. This, this, video, this version is long. This video is three minutes long, but here he explains in much more detail how he actually does it. He uh, pretends that he loves them, then he uh, slowly makes them get used to the love and makes them attach to himself and he invites one of his uh women who are loyal his uh so-called bottom bitch uh, who then comes in and tells that other woman hey you know this is amazing there are so many other women who work with him and they make so much money and and they and he loves them so much and so on and then you know you know the rest of the story uh and here i want to quickly bring this one up because this conception about human this is actually very important to bring up just to highlight what we are talking about when it comes to human trafficking misconception about human trafficking cases where the public may think the particular victim has been abducted from another country or lured and then they're under extreme course of situation to perform in the sex industry whereas the majority of the cases come under this type of lover boy method where an individual a male will then befriend an individual almost groom them pretend to fall in love with them have a relationship with them and then lure them in to work in the sex industry and as soon as the person has gotten there then they're kind of trapped in the situation the funny thing is um not funny the pretty dark thing about this is that many of the women who get into it and who actively do things for these people at some point they don't even often realize that they are being trafficked and exploited that this is actually human trafficking because uh People, people like Andrew Tate specifically, you know, make a system of manipulating and lying and giving them this this fake sense of uh, of love and you know, oh, you mean so much to me. This is all just for your for you and you know, uh, and we will be great together. And maybe one day you will not have to do this anymore. And meanwhile, he's stealing money from them and so on. And uh, there is even one of the messages that were leaked to the me to the media. Uh, where one of the women says something like to her parents, she texts and says, you guys were right. I have, uh, these people are horrible people. I have to get away from here. I am now realizing that this is literally human trafficking and I want to get the others out too, uh, is what she says. And this is how it goes. It doesn't always go like in the movies where, you, where they kidnap you at gunpoint and put you in cages and stuff. This is how it very often goes. And this is what Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate have done for which they will hopefully pay. Hey, check out this, check out the comment from Chia over there. Who? Chia Kusai. Chia? Chia, Chia Kusai. I just found out that nikah doesn't mean marriage. It's disgusting because the Hadith make use of the word. Also the verse on multiple wives isn't really what those losers have been preaching. Is that from Chia? I think so. Oh, I was looking at a different one. Uh, I was looking at a different one. 
It says, hey, David and AP, I'm Muslim, and I learned more about Islam from y'all than these Muslim influencers. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. That's cool. That is cool. That is cool. Gabla. All right. Let's get into this. Uh, here is Tristan Tate on this podcast of this guy. What's his name? Pet. Patrick Bet David, and that's uh, not him. I think isn't that is that him or that's that's the no, other guy, right? No, this is not him. The other guy is, but I'm yeah, I'm the other guy, the older guy. Yeah. It's his podcast. So uh, let's see. <laughs> or Sapala. Okay. So Sapala. shout out to Matt Sapala by the He's way. If you're watching this. this, you're gonna love this. Yeah. The finest of gentlemen, the Tates and the Sapala. That's it. That's a quick shout out. I, I, I very rarely smoke cigars, but if I yeah. do, it's with a table. Well, okay. To me, Matt Sapala did a Manect call. Wait a minute. I, this is where I put the thumbnail. All right. The, the, the pig comes out. Andrew comes out recently announcing he's a Muslim. Yeah. Right. But in the podcast with us, he said, you're, you're still a Christian. What, yes. What is that conversation like between the two of you? Well, you have to understand, if you are a fan of Andrew who watches him on the internet, oh, he's converted to Islam. That's sudden. It wasn't sudden. It was a journey that I saw him go on, which certainly lasted at least 10, 11 months up into the, the day he, he converted, reverted, uh, according to, to Muslims. So I'll use the proper terminology. Up until the day he reverted, I became a Christian about six years ago. I spent a lot of my life as an atheist. I'm so ashamed to say that. I don't like the word. I think it's a bad word now. Yeah, burn, burn them up. Burn them up. Burn up these atheists. All right, go ahead. It's a, it's a bad hey, word. Hey, I'm actually, hey, I'm starting to like this guy now. Go ahead. <laughs> talk some more, tell us more about how, how you don't like atheists. <laughs> it, it's funny to me that he's like, uh, you know, Andrew Tate, you know, it was a, it was a long process, several, you know, seven, six, seven months of converting to Islam. I, I imagine Andrew Tate, of course, had this had the big spiritual uh, journeys and deep thinking about the meaning of life and figured out that Islam must be the truth because it makes so much sense and all that. When in reality, we know what, out of Andrew Tate's mouth himself that he just converted because he thinks it's better for society, for his own. Yeah, and, th and that's, yeah, that's the real journey that he was on was, <laughs> and he was, he was posting things he was posting things about Islam long before he converted. Yeah. Um, so this is this is 2020. So he converted last year in, in 2022. Uh, this is his tweet from his band account. This is why I said the one of the best thing that the best thing that could ever happen to these guys is they got banned. Um, so he used to post all the time early, and you can find you can find uh, stuff about him saying haram, haram, haram on the wayback machine going back. Oh yeah. Uh, but he, he was very often especially apparently when he was visiting like Dubai and places like that, he'd start posting about Allah and, um, and calling things Haram and so on. But this is one of the tweets that got him banned, but he says, Allah has given a man urges. It is the duty of the woman to hide her body and not a Notice he says, Allah, Allah has given a man urges. It is the duty of the woman to hide her body and not awaken the urges of men or she is wholly responsible for his actions. The consequences of enticing a man's sexual urges are the fault of the woman alone. Dress modesty. Dress modestly. This is coming from a, a webcam. <laughs> Telling women, dress modestly or you deserve to be raped. Um, and so, and but so notice, but he's he's talking about Allah. This is 2020. So this is part of his journey. The point is, his journey was longer than six or seven months. It was yeah. it was years of him realizing, wow, Islam really lines up with uh, how I think women who aren't my webcam girls should behave. I also had a I had a compilation of um, of tweets that somebody posted. I think I bookmarked it somewhere. Um, where he mentions Islam several times in the past, uh, many years ago, and it's all just references of like, you know, Islam is against this, that's why Islam is good, Islam is intolerant, that's why it's good, and just stuff like that, you know, it's like, um, there's, there's no real meaning attached to it, just yeah. there are some uh, things in society that are degenerate, and Islam is very violently against that, and that's cool. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, uh uh, here, here's another here's another gem from Tate in 2020. I hold her neck and spit in her face while telling her while telling her I'm going to cheat on her. I say, "Stay still, you stupid 
B, while I um, leave that out, that's my love language. So his love language is grabbing a girl by the neck and spitting in her face while telling her, I'm going to cheat on you. That's his love language. This is the guy that's like this pillar of morality who's only being attacked by the Matrix for his uh, his great moral values. That's fantastic. I think there was also a tweet by Tristan Tate, by the way, where he says something like about sex that he's uh, unnecessarily violent during sex. And uh -huh. He says yeah, something he said that like... unnecessarily violent during sex. And no, he said he said I'm always unnecessarily violent during sex. Oh yeah. And these are these are the these are the these are the guys that. It's just because of their empowering message to young men. That's why the Matrix is attacking them. And now you will have some some incel people say, but women like it. So, um, and I, I don't even know how to how to approach that ridiculous statement. But uh, <laughs> because I was young and naive and stupid enough to think that people could be you're still you're more, still there and live in a <laughs> perfect harmonious society without the need for religion. All right, okay, let's listen to this part again. So he's talking about atheism, all right, atheists. Because I was young and naive in terminology up until the day he reverted. I became a Christian about six years ago. I spent a lot of my life a lot of my life. I'm so ashamed to say that. I don't like the word, I think it's a bad word. Notice, that's what I'm ashamed about. <laughs> I think that people could be We're not ashamed about all the, all the sex trafficking and stuff, but- uh... you, you know what's so funny? Um, when he says, when he mentions that he was an atheist and he's so ashamed of it, this is, doesn't it appear like that to you too? This is something that you that, that you would say if you feel a little bit insecure and you 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 look for the for the approval of other people who are listening to you right now and want to make yourself look better in their eyes. Yeah, if especially him, more so like Andrew for a while has been making fun of Christians. Uh, Tristan seems to be he's posted multiple tweets and said it in videos where he wants to form a Christian Muslim alliance and so on, uh, that Christians and Muslims should be united in in you know combating the ills of society and so on. So it seems like and that's the point when all I know about you is that you habitually lie. I am not going to take something seriously that you're saying, even if you happen to be authentic when you're saying that you've destroyed my ability to trust you until you just come clean and just acknowledge everything you've you've lied about. I it's going to be really, really difficult to trust what you're saying. So right here is he saying, I'm so ashamed of when I was an atheist and I realized the importance of religion. That is a point that someone could make. But or is he saying that just for practical purposes, I'm trying to court the favor of Christians and Muslims right now, and I want everyone rallying around me. Is he saying it because of that? That's the point. I can't. I don't. One. I don't know. That's the one. Yeah, and if I had, if I had to guess, it would be the latter. So it's like, put. Let me put it this way. I want to. I want to make this point. Everyone else seems to be listening to like the Tate brothers and for something they agree with, and then say, "You see, I agree with that." Whereas I'm looking at it, it's like, if you say something that I agree with and you're a compulsive liar and manipulator and you say something I agree with, I'm not going to yay and celebrate that you agree with me on something because I don't, I have no, I have no way of knowing if you really believe what you're saying right there. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. That is true. Um, um, young and naive and stupid enough. Was that in this one? I'm trying to remember. Anyway, I'll get back to it. I think that people could be perfectly moral and live in a perfect, harmonious society without the need for religion. And about six or seven years ago, I looked around the world, literally, at what people were doing. The massive- Not at, not at my, my porn business. <laughs> I looked at everyone else. This is, this is, By the way, is is it? I mean, it's amazing. Their their dad, their dad. I, I, if I recall correctly, maybe people have been following a little more closely than I have. But their dad was kicked out of the military because he was diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, I mean, the guy's a, apparently a genius. He was a he was a he was a, a chess champion. Um, but he gets kicked out of the military for being a narcissist. And you listen to these guys, and one of the characteristics, if you didn't know anything else about them, the fact that they can look 
at other places in the world and say, well, that's bad and be completely oblivious to how messed up they are. I mean, this is the same guy who did a training course on how to seduce virgins, right? How to seduce virgins. And he said, it's not for the sex. He's saying sex with a virgin is, isn't even good sex. It's just to imprint. It's to psycho, put your psychological imprint on these girls and ruin them for all other men and so on. That's their, that's their mentality. And then, of course, there's all the, the grooming and getting girls. According to the Tate brothers, they're getting girls who had no interest and who would never dream of doing webcam stuff. How do you get them to do it anyway through manipulation? And he's saying that right in the middle of all this, right in the middle of these guys making their um, making their millions through as porn kingpins, uh, He's looking around at the world going, hmm, look at all the immorality here. I need religion to deal with this immorality out there. Not not my immorality, everyone else's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Tristan, you might be more comfortable in Islam, buddy. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to look up uh, why he was discharged from the military. I'll, see, I'll check later. You know, the, the degeneracy in society. And everyone's an atheist. I thought, are these my people? And I was living in Romania, the most orthodox Christian country in the world. My daughter's maternal grandfather is actually an orthodox Christian priest. And I picked up the Bible again. And I read it from cover to cover, front to back. Mm -hmm. And that was six years ago when I became a Christian. Now, ever since Andrew's reversion, I have not spoken about my religious beliefs. Because Wait, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't understand. Society is he criticizing as an atheist society? Which what? he's saying that its basic position is he was an atheist and he thought. But notice he's even thinking in practical terms, right? Not, uh, hey, I realize that there must be a creator, and I realize that Jesus rose from yeah. the dead. It's I realize, you know, I at one point thought that atheism could sort of like the the world could be atheistic and you could end up with everything functioning well. He realized the need for a religion. Uh, he's got some relative of his daughter or something like this, her great, great grand uncle's cousin or whatever is a uh, is a Orthodox priest or something like that. Read the Bible, converted. And then he just said uh, that since his brother's conversion, he hasn't really talked about. But the thing that I'm that I'm uh, that, I, that I miss and that I don't understand is uh, he. He looks at atheists and thinks, "Are oh, these my people?" You know, and and he's in Romania. And he talks about the, the 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 Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox Christians. I'm, I'm I I, I want to quickly understand where my daughter, whom whom he views in what way and what he says about uh, Romania. The massive fetishizing about the need for religion, and about six or seven years ago, I looked around the world, literally, at what people were doing. The massive fetishization I'll call, it, I'll call it of abortion um you know the the degeneracy in society and everyone's an atheist i thought are these my people and i was living in romania the most good point country good point he's got a world. point my daughter's maternal grandfather is actually an orthodox christian priest and i picked up the bible again okay so um <laughs> my, he looks into the world my daughter's he's... sister's uncle's cousin's <laughs> grand grandfather was an orthodox priest so <laughs> Okay, but he looks into the world and he sees all the degeneracy uh, mm -hmm. and uh, abortion and this and that, mm -hmm. and everyone's an atheist. Yep, got that right. Okay, who's who's an atheist here? All how, the bad people. How is everyone an atheist? All the evil people. <laughs> and then he is in Romania and he's uh, surrounded by Orthodox Christians, right? Mm -hmm. And... Um, Probably along the lines of, it seems the same thing lots of people are doing. Look at all the stuff that's screwed up in America. Hey, you don't see a lot of, oh, look, there's some nice Christians here in Romania. They're not doing that stuff. So let me now, go. Let me go I, with that. I would, ne I would never come, I would never sit here and say Christians are especially bad. A Christian society is especially corrupt. A Christian society is especially this and that. I would never say an atheist society is, is that way. But what I don't understand is, I'm specifically pausing here. I'm, I'm feeling a little bit. Uh, confused because I know Romania. Too bad. Atheists. <laughs> there are atheists in the world and there's all sorts of degeneracy. 
Don't I, I know Romania, and he's talking about Romania as Orthodox Christians, and and he's Andrew Tate was right about one thing that Romania um, is one of the most religious countries in in Europe in terms of people who say I take my religion seriously, but I don't connect this to religion. He is, but how does he sit there and conclude that uh, that that this is an atheism problem when he's in Romania, which is notoriously known in Europe as one of the worst countries in terms of corruption, sex crimes, human maybe, trafficking, maybe you didn't, and so on. Maybe you didn't hear him, AP. <laughs> Let me restate it. He looked around at what's amazing is it's like it's like Christian churches that there are it's it's rare you kind of you kind of read about them and so but there are churches that like they focus on homosexuality as the sin that they talk about like yeah. every week right yeah and it's like wait a minute i mean look at this fat guy sitting in the front row the bible condemns gluttony too why don't you talk about that because i you know <laughs> it's like people want to focus on like anything I'm doing, I'm not. We're not going to talk about that. But if there's something I'm not doing that other people are doing, then uh, let's focus on that. But right, right there, what he said. I mean, all the things that these guys are doing right now. You're talking crime, trafficking, pornography. They're doing all this stuff, fraud, tax evasion. They're doing all this stuff. And you say, okay, what's the what's the degeneracy that you're talking about, Tristan? Abortion. Why? That's probably the one thing this guy's not doing, right? It's probably it's probably the one thing this guy's not doing. And so yeah, there, yeah. I I can see and guys, that's another symptom of uh of narcissism. You can only see stuff that other people are doing and you just zero in on that and that's the problem that we need to uh that's the problem in the world that we need to solve whatever the thing is that I'm not doing. Um and so yeah, it's it's uh it's easy to do that. And by the way, this all overlaps into what we were talking about with the fan bases and so on. <laughs> Like you want to focus on the other bad group. Like if you're if you're uh, if you're trying to form an alliance against wokeism, and then you'll say, "Hey, look, these LGBTQ people have have some of them have said they want to target kids," and so let's line up with Islam when these are the same guys that are saying they want child marriage and so on, and you just you ignore that. You ignore that. And uh, guys, you have to be careful because guess what? Anyone in the world and anyone, no matter how bad in history, could do exactly this right here. Uh, I could be doing all sorts of horrible things, but look at what that other person is doing. Whereas, I mean, step number one in being an actual ethical person should be uh, taking a look at yourself in your own life. And then you can worry about other people's problems. Matter of fact, G Jesus Jesus said that. He said, why, why are you worried about the, the speck and in your brother's eye when you've got a you've got a log or a beam in your own eye take, take worry about worry about the log in your own eye then worry about you know other people uh i'm looking at statista right now i can't share this because of their famous uh copyright things <laughs> statista looks at european countries by human trafficking uh as hotspots and uh puts romania on the third place for human trafficking because uh, of because <laughs> of the atheists there ap you do are you saying there are no are you saying there's no atheists in romania come on come on ap you know they're atheists there and they're well, the this, ones this do, they're the ones doing all this they're the ones doing all the sex trafficking except for the muslim and the christian here who are doing it too this this is so funny it's like um oh, we we are seeing the problem and the, and the point here right uh this, this guy, I mean, as, as you have just said, in more religious terms, this guy just looks out into the world and uh, all of these things that he doesn't like, he's like, oh, look, these people are doing those things. They're doing abortion. They're doing this and they're doing that. But then he is there doing human trafficking, corruption, uh, bribery, possibly rape, which they are being accused of, uh, organized crime and stuff like that. All of that is abundant and very high in, in Romania. And he doesn't see that as a problem. He sees problem in different things instead, which people are outraged about, which, yeah. which appeals to the current uh, controversy and the current conversations that people are having, that conservatives are having, that others are having. So uh, in, in my opinion, uh, as I see it, he's just trying to play to the audience here and just trying to you know, um, appeal to the emotions of people who are listening to him in order to, uh, to attract their, their, their sympathies. And think this this is this this is the same guy who actually 
again, trains people on how to seduce virgins yeah. just to just to just to mess with them psychologically. But think about that. If you're talking to a a 20 or 22 year old uh, young woman and she's still a virgin, that's probably a young woman who was waiting for marriage. Right. She's waiting for the right guy to be married. And Tate, Tristan Tate's methodology is how do you seduce her anyway? How do you how do you how do you take her virginity anyway? And he says you have to spend some time on it. You have to spend some uh, a few months basically grooming her for this. Then you take her virginity and then you get rid of her. Or you know if you want to keep her as a webcam girl, you do that. And this is the guy who, <laughs> hey hey why why did you uh, what's your problem with atheism? Why do you want to convert to Christianity? I looked around at the degeneracy of abortion. <laughs> really, not the degeneracy of the guy in the mirror. Not that, not that degeneracy. Oh boy, this is ridiculous. This is just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Um, let me quickly bring up uh, Tristan Tate. Where was that? I showed that last time, but this is a very good, very good uh, place to Powerful. actually bring, bring that up here. Powerful. Tristan Tate. Talisman. Talis Talisman. Talisman Tate. Oh, here it is. This is one of the versions of footage where he talks about virgins. And uh, here we have it. There's another one, I think, which is a little bit more disgusting, but I can't find it right now. But here, um, this is the guy who sits here and talks about degeneracy and corruption and stuff like that. Nobody covers this topic. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> well, I'm going to talk to you. I'm the only one evil enough <laughs> <laughs> to talk to you about this. Virgins. Virgins. Now, elite level playboys, these dorks who take these pictures with all these girls, they are usually paid, they're models, they're actresses, they're, they're sent there by their agency. I do not pay for sex. I've never hired a prostitute in my life and I won't, I don't need to. But when you don't pay for sex, there are advantages to that. You get the women no one else gets. Any shake in Dubai can hire a, a hottest Dubai escort and bang her. I could go to Dubai and bang the exact same escort. Why would I want to? That's disgusting. However, in my situation, you get access to girls that no one else has access to. When you run game like me and meet the women who I meet, it's all about game, eh? Circles I meet, you meet beautiful virgins sometimes. Beautiful. It sounds like how people describe uh, paradise in Islam, yeah. where you will have beautiful virgins for me, all eternity. <laughs> I'll do two or three virgins a year. Now, how do you date a virgin when you're a when you're an ice cold player? There is a tactic which I'm going to share with you on how to date a virgin and how to take a girl's virginity. Pay attention. This is a course that the, that that Tristan Tate offers on his on their website, which people pay for. They pay for this, and he then sits there. So this is a video published as part of that course that people pay for. And he teaches his paying subscribers who are like, oh, these are such great role models, how to pick up many virgins and have sex with several virgins a year. Because, you know, having sex with, you know, older women and with other women is just, it's just. Yeah. Know, and can, can you boring. imagine? You should always you, get virgins. Can you imagine how many like junior high school kids, middle school kids and stuff were like, Mom, can I borrow your credit card to sign up for the war room so I can take this important course? <laughs> What's the course, honey? How to take the girl's virginity and like learning these methods. And like these are the these are the people that, <laughs> that these guys are now celebrating as the uh, the pillars of morality that are the only thing in the way of them. They're the only thing stopping the matrix. They're the only thing preserving morality. These guys. What did you learn today, son? Oh, I learned how to bang at least three virgins a year. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I'm trying to up my game to get up to six <laughs> virgins per year. I don't want to be with any of these girls, but uh, I, I want to I want to leave my imprint on them. Yeah. Girlfriend for three months. Then we had very boring sex. That's how I had sex with my first virgin. Now, the recipe hasn't changed, but the tactics and the implementation has certainly changed. Be their boyfriend for three months and be in a nice relationship with them. That is the recipe. I'm sorry, guys. You want to run into a virgin and fuck her the next day? 
Don't ask me how. I don't know. I don't think anyone knows. I don't even think it's possible. You have to be their boyfriend for an extended period of time. You then have to take her virginity on the second month anniversary or something along those lines. And I'm going to teach you how to do it while still being in a playboy lifestyle scenario. No, um Pay attention to what is actually happening here. This guy is not just talking about randomly uh, having sex with virgins. He is talking about uh, building a relationship with a virgin for the sole purpose of eventually having sex with her while also aiming to establish relationships with other virgins and also having sex with them and naturally, you know, uh, cheating on them and finally dumping them and so on. Uh yeah. What you do with your virgin is you turn everything into a date. I need to go have a business lunch with my brother or my friends. I make sure she's there. I Uber her in, I Uber her out. If I have to go for a drive, I make sure she's with me. I go pick her up, do my drive, drop her off, go back home. And Nothing. so on, whatever. And so on. Is there anything else here? Let's Powerful. Know. We need to get, we need to learn these tactics, AP. <laughs> so important, so important to our lives. And, and if we learn this, we can really fight degeneracy in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you do with virgins? Don't get pushy and get your dick hard. If she won't huff you, do not let her touch you. And oh, you're a virgin. Maybe you can S my D. It smells of desperation without S for one day if she stays with you and so on, you know. And had a few drinks at the hotel. I've been her boyfriend for three months. Hotel bar, take her upstairs. Virginity gone. As far as she's concerned, I've been her boyfriend for three months. She's in a long-term committed relationship. And all it's taken is me to order some Ubers when I'm having my free time with my friends. That is how I have added virgins to my list. Two of the girls of my six were virgins when I met them. They're not anymore, but now they're mine. Um, these are... Uh, now they're mine. Yeah, uh, it, it's just it's just amazing when you look at these guys, right? And it's basically everyone around them is being manipulated for yeah. their own for their own personal gain, uh, either sexual or or uh, or financial gain. They're constantly tricking and all these videos are we're constantly tricking and deceiving everyone around us into making money for us or to pleasuring us or something. Yeah. And then you've got all their fans right now when they're using the exact same methods of manipulation that they used to use. They're just using them on everybody around the globe right now, all their fans and so on. They're using the exact same methods and all these dumb fans think, oh, there's no way these guys would be lying to us and manipulating us. No, no, no. Yeah. These guys, these guys just just are telling us the truth and they have only good intentions in mind. We know because they say so. But David, you're taking this out of context. You're taking this video out of context. Isn't it isn't it amazing? I mean, think compare I mean, think about this. Think about a, a an Andrew Tate or a Tristan Tate fan right now. And we say, guys, they're manipulating you. They just that they they have no, no! Real interest in you. No! You say no, 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 no. Now go back, go back in time to one of Tristan Tate's virgin girlfriends. A month into the relationship, you say, "Girl, he's just manipulating you." Look, this guy no, brags. No. This guy brags online about how this is his method. No, he loves me. He, he loves, loves me. He keeps taking me to all these uh, business meetings and stuff. He loves me. You can't tell me I'm gonna have sex with him. It's like. How, how? How? Once you know someone's entire methodology is just manipulation, how in the name of common sense do you believe him? I have no idea, but uh, that, uh, is, that, is a very, that is a very good point. It's a very good point. Just shift the the time in which you specifically look at your relationship with these guys, whether you are in a sexual relationship or in a fanboy relationship, and then think about that again. Lots of people on their path thought, oh, no, 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 these people are completely, these two guys, they're completely genuine. I can trust them. They are reliable. And then they get dumped. And the whole time they have just been used for their pleasure or their monetary gain. Congratulations if you are part of that. Powerful. <laughs> I'm from Quebec. Mm -hmm. And that was six years ago when I became a Christian. 
And I picked up the Bible again, and I read it from cover to cover, front to back. Mm -hmm. And that was six years ago when I became a Christian. Now, ever since Andrew's reversion, I have not spoken about my religious beliefs because there are teams on Twitter. So you, get, you guys get the exclusive. There are literally warring tribes on Twitter of Christian trolls, let's call them, and Muslim trolls, all fighting for my soul. Tristan, what do you believe in Tristan? And I haven't mentioned my religion ever since Andrew's version to Islam. So there are people who think I'm a Muslim. There are people who know I'm a Christian. This is such a such an interestingly nice form of uh, narcissistic self-centeredness. I love it. <laughs> but for me, the values that are shared between the two faiths are both contrary to everything what Andrew would call the matrix is trying to shove down young people's throats. And trying to... All right, let's listen to this part one more time. <laughs> no, it's very uh... simple, AP. The <laughs> matrix, the matrix is run by atheists. And so the only thing that can stop the matrix is a united front of Christian and Muslim webcam pimps <laughs> to stand against the degeneracy of the atheistic matrix Something like it's something like that. <laughs> Both contrary to everything what Andrew would call the matrix is trying to shove down young people's throats and trying to program people to believe. All right. So uh, Christianity and Islam are both uh, in their values contrary to everything that the matrix is trying to shove down your throat. And yeah, for example, the idea that uh, human trafficking is a crime and that it is bad, for example. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, stupid matrix. Stupid Getting in the way of idiots. me taking a girl's virginity and making her become my webcam girl. Now, I want to ask you, I, I want to ask you, David, since uh, since you are a Christian and I'm an atheist, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. I'm stupid. I'm degenerate. I don't have yeah. any moral. Yeah. I'm, I'm dumb. Yeah. You're evil. I'm completely fetishizing all the evil terrible stuff in the world i don't know so i want to ask you yeah it's, it's good uh, it's good it's good T uh, tristan tate is now my hero for helping me to combat you but go ahead <laughs> i want to ask you uh in the light of everything that tristan has just told us um so mm -hmm. he, um he does he lures people women into fake relationships promises them uh, wonderful love and this and that and marriages. Uh, and his brother does it as well. His brother primarily does it. And then they employ them as basically online porn slaves. Uh, and when they only want to work one hour a day, they tell them, no, you will work 12 hours today and so on. Uh, and some people call this human trafficking for some reason. I don't know. But um, is this is this okay in Christianity? Is this like... is <laughs> Is Christianity fundamentally supportive of this? And is Christianity opposed to the idea of shutting this down? Or, huh. Yeah, well, uh, Christianity would have a massive problem with pretty much everything this guy says or has <laughs> ever or has ever done. But the Matrix is the real enemy here. So we'll just focus on that. We'll give these guys a free pass on everything. Fair point. Okay, fair point. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, problem solved. See, that's how you see. Do. See? Uh, I think the days. Now of stop your degeneracy, AP. <laughs> murdering each other. In I just can't. I love the Matrix. I can't. I can't. And, um, you know, trying to take the holy city, holy city of Jerusalem, etc., are over. I think that there are ideological differences, and there are ignorant Christians who will be like, oh, yeah, but, you know, Islam's a fake religion. But then there. How is that an ignorant Christian? <laughs> if a Christian says, okay, and he will go on. Or ignorant Muslims will say, oh, Christianity is a fake religion. Good. You're supposed to think that. They're different religions and they do teach different. How does that make sense? Okay. Um, at first, it sounds very stupid when he says there are ignorant Christians who say Islam is a fake religion. And there are ignorant Muslims who say Christianity is a fake religion. And, and you're supposed to believe that. <laughs> it's good. You're supposed to think that. How in the world does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, there are ignorant people who think that two plus two is five. But you have to believe that. <laughs> uh, we, we've talked about this before. It's like it's all about like the, the cadence and the, the cadence of their voices and the confidence with which they speak. Andrew Tate and Tristan, 
maybe on certain topics they would know what they're t like if it comes to manipulating women th these guys are you know masters of their trade and so on uh if it were kickboxing these guys are i mean they're both i mean uh, andrew was a champion kick kick kickboxer uh tristan was a i don't know what level of success he rose to but i mean i know that he was a a an excellent kickboxer so there are all sorts of things that these guys know about but they'll talk about everything with the same level of confidence, even yeah. if they're saying completely idiotic, insane things. And their fans just can't tell the difference, right? Yeah. It's, these guys just know everything they're talking about, where it, it's it, no wonder these guys fit in so well with the Dawa crowd, right? The Dawa crowd's the exact same thing. As long as you sound confident in what you're saying, most people will fall for the idea that, that you actually know what you're talking about, even if you're spouting complete nonsense. Yeah. So what this guy is actually what this guy basically said he says here is uh christians some ignorant christians think islam is you know fake false some ignorant muslims think christianity is false and that's exactly and, what you're supposed to believe and it's okay they're supposed to think that what what what, what how does it how, how does it make sense and how do you even combine that i mean it's 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 so wrong i don't even know how to respond to it <laughs> Um, okay, fact, Christians are supposed to believe naturally that Islam is uh, a false and fake religion. And Muslims are naturally supposed to believe that Christianity is uh, is falsehood and a corruption of a one's true preaching. And it's fake. That's exactly what you're supposed to believe. But you're ignorant if you do. Fantastic. That's what he just said. Great point, Tristan. Powerful, powerful. You're a genius. Talisman. Things. They have different messengers and they have slightly different messages. But as a whole, slightly different. I'm perfectly happy <laughs> living in a house when my brother is a Muslim because <laughs> one, I respect his decision. Two, I understand why he reverted. Three, I understand that we have a common enemy in the uh, We have an enemy in common and we have the exact same goals. I feel like the religions now should be closer than ever before. It's fine to say, you believe things about God that I don't, and I believe things about God that you don't. But can we at least agree that this is wrong? And I feel like common ground would unite Christians and Muslims hand in hand if people were less standoffish. So this is a very, um, very, the world is a wonderful place. Uh, let's put on these, these, these pink uh, glasses and uh, or whatever you you use, however you say that phrase in English. I'm completely butchering it right now. And <laughs> God notice, on. notice what he just said, right? It's hey, we agree on this, therefore uh, we should unite against that. Yeah, you can apply that in all kinds of directions, right? Say yeah. hey, me and AP both think that child marriage is wrong, therefore we should unite. You see, uh, but guess what? Uh, tons and tons and tons of atheists believe that child marriage is wrong, and tons and tons of Christians believe that child marriage is wrong, and Islam teaches that child marriage is fine. Therefore, we should all be united. Well, guess what? In a sense, he's right. In a sense, he's right that if you agree with someone else, then you agree with them. You shouldn't have any problem with that. Uh, uh, with that idea. But uh, I don't know. It seems like all these guys want to do this in one direction here's you know christians and muslims agree on this therefore they should unite again you know against that whereas if you just say well you know christians and lots of atheists and lots of muslims to be fair find these guys behavior absolutely reprehensible therefore everyone should unite against these guys suddenly they wouldn't think that's a good idea exactly exactly alhamdulillah it's just ridiculous and there also one thing to point out is uh he says that um that there is, of course, harmony at home, and he has no problem living together with uh, Andrew Tate, his brother, who is now a Muslim, and he's a Christian. I have to say one thing here, which is um, Andrew Tate is not living the life of a Muslim. Not at all. Correct. And, neither one of these guys is. Yeah. Uh, even, uh, neither one of these guys are living up to what they say. Even, even though I am strictly against Islam, even though I have big problems with Islam, uh the way these people are living is uh is is not at all in alignment with islamic morality and neither is it with christian morality and and it, at this point it just looks like the both of these guys are using religion f as a tool in order to uh to do demagoguery to appeal to the emotions of of the of of the the very crowd that they consider 
um, useful for their own purposes politically, the crowd that supports them. They find that religion is more popular in this crowd, in this uh, right-wing crowd that is currently uh, suitable for them due to uh, the messages that they are presenting. Therefore, they are using religion as a tool in order to appeal to the audience. And I, and I don't want to create a conspiracy theory here, but don't you find it quite convenient that uh, these are true brothers who are uh, who are preaching and trying to uh, act like they are um, the heroes of uh, a conservative traditional society, and one of them is a Christian and one of them is a Muslim? Yeah, I am. Um... <laughs> so that they so that they have both of the religions and can take both of them behind themselves by yeah. just lying to them my only question like what i can't tell could you know could could go in either way like are they aware of this like do they know what they're doing like do they know hey uh i'm gonna portray myself as a christian i'm gonna portray myself as a muslim specifically for purposes of manipulating an audience mm -hmm. or are they just so narcissistic that they they really can't see it? They're just incapable of any sort of self-examination. They're just incapable of seeing any problems and they only focus on on everyone else. And uh uh, but yeah, it's been, guys. I mean, think the I keep saying it's the exact same thing. I am going to present myself in a certain way to get this girl to do what I want so that it serves me. And what are they doing right now? I'm presenting myself in a certain way in order to get uh, our fans to behave in a certain way that then profits me. It's the exact it's the exact same thing. And what you'll see over and over again, they could completely change sides on some issue, and mm -hmm. like like they could go woke right now and say, actually, you know, we've we've rethought things and we're going to be super woke right now. And then they would say things that the woke crowd agrees with. And then everyone, oh, yay, they're on our side. They're on our side now. You see, oh, they acknowledge they acknowledge that their, their previous anti-woke stuff is wrong. And now their woke stuff is It just seems like as the moment you say that you agree with someone on some important issue, the whole group falls down at your feet as their new hero. And this is this is this is interesting stuff right here. There's just one thing that is complete that is very, very confusing to me, David, and it doesn't really make sense to me right now. Uh, Andrew Tate is a, speaks about how he is a Muslim, and all the Muslims out there, they are very proud of it. They are, you know, parading Andrew Tate as their hero, and they're like, Yeah, look at this guy. And they they, they love him. Tristan Tate is here. He says that he's a Christian and he talks about Christian values. Yet you, as a Christian, you're not uh, not proud of him. What, what is not it? happening? Not proud of that. Why are, you, why are you doing this, David? We're not proud of that. Uh, it's the same thing with Kanye. I mean, Kanye several years ago. Kanye several years ago announced that he had converted to Christianity. Every Christian I know had pretty much the exact same reaction. Happy for you. Really awesome. But before you know, we're going to put you forward as our new spokesman or something like that. We're going to have to we're going to have to see what happens over a period of several years. Um, we want to we describe this as you you know a tree by its fruits, right? You have to see, okay, what kind of fruit does this does this tree bear over time? Um, instead, I mean, apparently in Islam, you just say I'm a Muslim, and it doesn't matter what you've done and what you continue to do; they'll just cling cling to you, rally around you before they see what change anything is going to have on your life. And I guarantee there are plenty of Muslims right now who are watching all of this and going, Tate says he's not drinking alcohol anymore. Alhamdulillah. And it doesn't matter everything else he's doing and saying or teaching. He, he threw you that little bone and that's enough for you. But uh, yeah, it's, it's notice Tristan, you're not, we don't, we do not want you as our representative. Um, if, if you, if you believe in the gospel, that's great. But given the way that you are living and manipulating people and constantly lying about things, we don't want you as our representative. Whereas it, with, with Tate, it, I mean, my goodness, it's like, what, what would you have to do to get the, to get the Dawah crowd to turn on you? I mean, what would you have to do? You could literally be training training people to be sex traffickers and groomers, and they're totally fine with it as long as you say, "Oh, I'm a Muslim now." In fact, um, I'm not a big fan of of tribalism. I'm not a big fan of representation. But I want to say one thing: at this point, 
Tristan, I'm really happy that you uh, that you talk trash about atheism and atheists. So. <laughs> That's something we can agree on. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, um, there's a cool part coming up in this video. I have no problem with my brother being a Muslim. He's quit drinking. I have lost my drinking partner. There you go. See? And the only reason I'm actually talking to you about religion and answering these questions, because I kept it very close to my heart and I haven't spoken to anybody about it, is because I am publicly drinking whiskey. Well, so, if you need a new drinking partner, Justin, I can help you out here. Absolutely. So, and, you're, so and you're Jewish? Yes. There we most go. of the time. So, uh, entertain to okay. Well, Muslims uh, refer to Christians and Jews as, as people of the book. That and you have to understand that Muslims hold Christians in, in very high regard. Yeah. So I've read even since getting out of jail, I've read four books. Very high regard. Was, we have since, to be subjugated, and, we're the, and they're the four. worst of they're the worst of creatures, but high regard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you will find uh, Muslims often say something similar to, especially when they are talking to. Uh, this is very funny. Wait, that guy uh, opposite to him is Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> Why doesn't he talk about how how Islam views Jews? Does he know? Yeah. I mean, think about how interesting that that conversation would have been, because the same guys <laughs> interviewed Andrew Tate. Hey, Andrew, what do you think about what Muhammad said about fighting Jews? What do you think about that? Wow. It would be, would be nice if there were some, I mean, if these guys are going to talk about their religion, great. Bring up something remotely resembling uh, an accurate point to, to, to bring up as far as look at what you just said. You just said, hey, Islam holds Christians in this high regard. Uh, but calls for them to be violently subjugated because of their belief that Jesus is the son of God and calls them the worst of creatures for rejecting Muhammad. It's pretty weird high regard. Hey, you're so bad that I'm going to um, I'm going to violently subjugate you and you are the worst of all creatures. Oh, we have done this a lot of times, but I'm just going to do a few things here. I just want to bring up three sources here. Source number one is uh, Quran chapter 98, verse 6, which says, Indeed, those who disbelieve from among the people of the scripture and the polytheists, meaning those who did not adopt Islam, will be in the fire of hell, abiding eternally therein. Those are the worst of creatures. Yeah, those check out the uh, check out the Mosin Khan. The Mosin Khan, that's the same thing as the Haleli Khan. Right there. Verily, those who disbelieve in the religion of Islam, the Quran, and Prophet Muhammad... Um, he, he's included the per parenthetical commentaries from goes back to Ibn Abbas, who refers to what what you're disbelieving in. You're disbelieving in the religion of Islam, the Quran and Muhammad. So those who disbelieve in the religion of Islam, the Quran and Prophet Muhammad from among the people of the scripture, Jews and Christians and al mushrikun will abide in the fire of hell. They are the worst of creatures. So those of you who reject Muhammad are the worst of creatures. Well, guess what? That's that's Jews in general. That's Christians in general. So Jews and Christians in general are this, according to the Quran, which respects them highly. Obviously, the interpretation, the exegesis of this is, according to Tristan Tate, that Muslims hold Christians in very <laughs> high regard. That's, that's obviously what we take from here. Uh, another is... Issue is 929. It says, fight those who don't believe in Allah or in the last day and who don't consider unlawful what Allah and his messenger have made unlawful, who don't adopt the religion of truth, i.e. Islam, from among those who were given the scripture. So uh, those who were given the scripture are Christians and Jews. If they don't accept Islam, if they don't accept uh, the religion of truth, i.e. Islam, they are to be fought until they give the jizya protection money willingly while they are humbled. This is an order by Allah to fight the Christians and the Jews if they do not accept Islam. And then in the in the next verse it says the Jews say Ezra is the son of Allah which yeah, no this Jew is ever the, said. This is the justification. Yeah. And the Christians say the Messiah is the son of Allah. That is their statement from their mouths. They imitate the saying of those who disbelieved before. May Allah destroy them. How are they deluded? So, so this is the justification. Because Jews say Ezra is the son of Allah, which no Jew ever said. And uh, Christians say Messiah is the son of Allah. Therefore, you are supposed to fight them and subdue them unless they accept the true religion of Islam. And this is how much Islam values Christians and Jews and holds them in high regard. And finally, one of my favorite sources here that I, that I love to go to is 
This hadith, which is authentic and which almost every Muslim in the world knows about, the last hour would not come unless the Muslims will fight against the Jews and the Muslims would kill them until the Jews would hide themselves behind a stone or a tree and a stone or a tree would say, Muslim or servant of Allah, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. But the tree Gargut would not say, for it is the tree of the Jews. I learned this stuff when I was uh, when I, when I was like in, in first grade or something like that. We've talked uh, we've talked about this before, but there were, this is probably like eight or nine years ago. But someone in Hollywood put out uh, something from the founding charter of like Hamas or something like that, and it just stated this right. It said it said we believe that the the hour will not come until Muslims fight the Jews and so on, and they they get all these. Hollywood celebrities, actors, and so on, from TV shows and movies and so on, and they all sign this document saying, we condemn this comment from Hamas. And it's like, Hamas is just saying exactly what Muhammad said. <laughs> if if they point, so if Hamas says it, if Hamas says it, you instantly recognize that this is really bad and dangerous and you will condemn it. If you had told these same people, no, that's actually from Muhammad. They're, oh, well, you know, different cultures. And, yeah, it's fine. And Muhammad. Uh, that's so weird. So I, I would really be interested in in, the, in in how the conversation would unfold if. Uh, oh, by the way, there is also a verse which says that uh, those most uh, distant to Muslims would be the Jews, yeah. and um, or five. I'm really wondering how the conversation would unfold if Tristan Tate was like, oh, you're a Jew? Oh, Islam, by the way, says, you know, that they will fight the Jews and kill them, every single one of them. And, you know, the trees and stones will say there's a Jew behind me. And it also says, you know, Jews are, you know, terrible, worst of creatures and, and so on, by the way. But, hey, we should all just, you know, stick together and stuff. <laughs> and ima imagine how interesting this would have just gotten if anyone had brought up any serious pushback to what, Tristan is saying here, oh, we, oh, oh, we love Jews and Christians. I mean, I mean, Muslims love Jews and Christians. Very high regard, very high regard. Hey, you know, imagine this guy saying, hey, since I'm a Jew, uh, I just wanted to ask what you think, given what you just said, what do you think about this passage? That would have, that would have been really yeah. interesting to hear Tristan's response. He's saying, ah, oh, Muslims love, uh, Muslims love Christians and Jews. He actually uh, often engages with people who ask him stuff on Twitter, so maybe it should be brought up. And uh, I don't know, they, they're still, I think they're still in house arrest right now. The house arrest has been extended for 30 days. And Andrew Tate is having a meltdown over that, which is very funny. Uh, <laughs> so. Well, I think he knows now the house arrest is going up through the trial like he's uh -huh. going to be on house arrest up until the trial starts and so there's kind of no way out right now right i mean it's i'm on house arrest and then i'm going to trial and it, he he knows he knows what the evidence is against him he knows what he's done he know who he knows who's testifying against him and if he weren't on house arrest that would have given him a possible way out of the country i, I would never i would never laugh at somebody who says uh i'm struggling with my mental health but <laughs> In this case, especially if we're dealing with somebody who says mental health problems uh, don't exist, depression is fake. Uh, when so, when some a guy like that tweets this, then I'm just I just laugh. I know what they're going to do to me. I'm struggling to sleep for months now. I haven't slept more than 45 minutes uninterrupted. I guess you could say I'm struggling with my mental health, but I ensure I smile every day. I'm never miserable. The only answer I can find is to train like an animal. God gave me this struggle because God wants me stronger. I will give him what he wants. Yeah, of course. Of course, you're losing it. Losing it. He said prior to this uh, that he would be depressed. And we have we have transcripts from from his jail calls because the idiot was too dumb to understand that they would actually intercept the calls that he makes out of out of uh, out of his jail cell uh where he he begs people to get him out and says talk to this and this politician tell them uh, they will be rewarded greatly once i get out and yeah. uh, tell this and this uh, accuser that you are going to sue them for 200 million dollars pretend that you're a lawyer and so on so yeah, what a, what a dope. trying to get out so it's, yeah, I don't I don't know if they actually play the warning on phone calls from inmates in the US. They tell you this call may be monitored or monitored or recorded. They tell you. 
Um, so I don't know. Maybe they don't tell him and he's just completely dumb. But the the reason you're seeing this uh this uh breakdown is <laughs> the mindset of a narcissist, you're just you feel you constantly feel like you're invincible and you can beat everyone around you. And no matter what they bring against you, you can outsmart everyone. You can out manipulate everyone. You can get your, you can get your supporters to crush those who come against you. And if you finally start realizing it's not working, I actually can't get out of this. I'm not going to outsmart everyone. It's like psychologically traumatic to him. Wait, I thought I could take on the entire world and win and I'm losing. I'm losing and you're, you I'm are, losing. You are not what you thought you were. You are not as good as you thought you were. That's got to be a bad feeling. And so, uh, yeah, God, God's doing this because he wants me, not because God wants me to, you know, hold, God wants to hold me accountable for the things I've done. He just wants me to be stronger so I can fight the matrix. It's crazy, crazy Powerful stuff. quality stuff, powerful stuff. Hey. The, 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 again, there's a cool part of that Tristan video coming up where he talks about, uh, I guess, people trying to bribe him into converting. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Remember yeah. that? That's, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. By a Muslim scholar who lives in the United Arab Emirates since getting out of jail. And I was actually quizzed by a Muslim scholar who lives in the United Arab Emirates. He said, Tristan, are you ever going to revert to Islam? And I said to him, I said, it, reversion or conversion to any religion, I don't believe it's something that you do. I believe it's something that happens to you. Mm. If you look into a subject and you read about, you read the Bible, and you read about, you know, Christianity, and you read about the life of Jesus Christ, you don't think, you know what? Yes, yeah, I'm a Christian. I feel like it's something that would have to happen to me, not something I choose to do. And I've even had people say, oh, you know, your life would be better if you revert to Islam because, um, you know, there'd be benefits of you living in the Middle East. Except benefits if you convert. How disingenuous would that be? You have benefits in the Middle East if you convert to Islam. Interesting. I wonder if that was presented to his uh, brother, brother Andrew. Converts with benefits. What converts if, with benefits. What is happening here? Converts what is with he benefits? talking about? <laughs> Your life would be so much better if you converted to Islam. What is he talking about? He's talking uh, I don't about know. converts with benefits. What converts benefits with is benefits. he talking just, about? Just convert and... and uh, and you'll get some benefits there. Let's see, Let's see where he goes. Now, what kind of benefits is he talking about? Huh. But there'd be benefits. People say, oh, you know, your life would be better if you revert to Islam because, um, you know, there'd be benefits of you living in the Middle East, etc. And I said, no, no, no. How disingenuous would that be to my Muslim friends and colleagues, of which I have many, to revert for any beneficial reason other than me genuinely feeling it within my soul? Notice, so notice. I mean, he just... Happened. He just said it. In other words, if you if it wasn't clear what he's what he's talking about, what he's being offered, if hey, there would be some real benefits towards you in the Middle East if you just convert to Islam. If he wasn't clear on exactly what he meant, he said, "No, it would be disingenuous of me to convert for those benefits and not because I really believe it." So he wasn't he wasn't being he wasn't being told, hey, you should convert because it's true and here's all the evidence. It was, hey, do you realize how popular and how what kind of benefits you would have in the Middle East if you just converted to Islam? Um, it, it, isn't that basically Muhammad Hijab's message to you, like in a nutshell, like, hey, you know, things that go really, really well for you if you uh, just yeah. convert to Islam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He told me in, in private, Muhammad Hijab told me in private messages. So, like, hey, how about you convert back to Islam? How about you revert? You know, you would be, you would instantly become very, very popular. And, you know, you would have a lot of good things. A lot of the, our leaders were former enemies of Islam. So, why don't you come back and join us? There are lots of benefits. And now here is, here is Tristan Tate. He's sitting here and explaining while trying to, as always, depict himself as so virtuous and so good that's basically the whole existence of these two people whenever they talk they talk about how great they are and how honorable and fantastic they are he tries to depict himself as so honorable that he would never ever just convert to a religion for you know benefits unless he has a moment and he believes in it but uh, he's giving away that people in the middle east actually approach him and told him, hey, there will be benefits for you in the Middle East if you convert to Islam. So why are you not doing it? These people are 
so stupid. This is how Andrew Tate gives away stuff about himself that incriminates him. And Tristan Tate is sitting here giving away something that I'm really curious about now. Uh, Chris in Christ commented, uh, she said, it's this, this is the Islamic prosperity gospel. Um, for people who aren't familiar with the prosperity gospel, there are actual preachers who yeah. God wants you to be rich and convert to Christianity and claim your wealth and God's going to shower you with money and so on. And this is kind of, uh, this is, but it, it, it's totally correct in Islam. I mean, if you're a famous person and you convert to Islam, yes, you are, there are wealthy people who would gladly shower you with money to go around influencing the next generation and getting them to convert to Islam. They will absolutely love you, which unfortunately for these guys calls into question how genuine these conversions are. Calls into question everything. And mm -hmm. this, this, this guy is sitting here like an idiot and talking about this. And I'm really wondering, now he's praising himself saying, oh, no, I, how disingenuous would that be of me to convert for some, you know, benefits? Yeah. But didn't your brother convert to Islam? Under the yeah, notice that, that, should have, that should have been the instant follow-up question. <laughs> Even if he doesn't want to give details or something like that, the instant follow-up question should have been, if these guys wanted to push back on these guys at all, even slightly, the obvious follow-up is, hey, so you were told that it would be very beneficial to you to convert to Islam. Was that offer ever made to your brother? And of course it was, right? If they're coming at Tristan saying, hey, things will go really well for you. Lots of benefits to converting to Islam, if you know what I'm talking about. Of course that was offered to Andrew. And then so the follow-up to that, whatever the answer is, okay, because notice, we know that that was offered to, to, if they were offering that, if they were making that, trying to make that deal with Tristan, they're obviously presenting that to Andrew over the years. And so then was, did Andrew convert because of that? Or was that just a side perk for him that yes, you get some benefits too, even though you're converting because you're so sincere. Um, was this, uh, was this just a side, a side, uh, a side benefit for him? That would have been the issue. That would have been very interesting. And of course, he would have said, no, he's completely sincere. But come on, guys. Uh, th this is this is why I said before that uh, I don't want to create a conspiracy theory here, but it seems kind of suspicious that both of these guys are appealing, trying to appeal to this whole uh, masculine traditionalist uh, type. And then one of them is a Muslim and one of them is a Christian. And they mention their religious uh, stuff occasionally, uh, where they, they're trying to gather from both religions people and have their support and they're just using this as a tool not because they actually value it or believe in it that's what it looks like to me but i'm just i'm not i'm not sure if that is the truth but here is tristan tate saying that he is told hey there will be a lot of benefits for you in the middle east if you convert to islam you know and his brother did it the uh <laughs> the duck just said uh, i've seen the light please pay me muslims <laughs> 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 hey, pretty much, pretty much any social media influencer with a big following could could make that deal right now. You just have to, you just have to find out who the right people are. But yes, they will gladly uh, pay you. There are people who are actually sponsored on YouTube, uh, Western white people who to go and travel to these Middle Eastern countries. They are paid to uh, to to go there and to advertise and tell everybody how amazing it is. But then they also end up uh, speaking. Good stuff about Islam and Muslims, and it 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 it, it, look, it looks like that's probably part of the deal too. Um, mm -hmm. um, Powerful, dear sheikhs from Dubai uh, or wherever you are. Um, maybe just get in touch. Send me one of your offers. I might think about uh, taking down my channel and reverting to Islam if I like what I'm reading. Just get in touch. I won't tell anybody about this. Uh, but yeah, that sounds very interesting. Isn't this amazing? These guys are... I, I feel like there's something wrong with these two people. <laughs> yeah, the, the source of their problems is narcissism. You just can't, you can't see it. You think you can say whatever you want and no one's ever going to catch on because you're so insanely superior to everyone else. <laughs> Why don't they just shut up and not say so? Not say these things that they shouldn't be saying in public. Why don't they learn 
from the mistakes of Yasser Qadi. And even, even when he's blurting stuff like this out, notice it's all to show what a great person he is, right? Yes, specifically. For that, instance, that's why he's doing it. all the people, all the people tried to get me to convert by offering me all these benefits. So notice, I just granted that there are wealthy people in the Muslim world offering to give you massive amounts of money for convert for pretending to convert and, and becoming a Muslim. I just acknowledge that. But you see, I wouldn't do that because I'm so noble and wonderful. I would it would be disingenuous of me. And if you know anything about me and my course on deflowering virgins, it's <laughs> that I'm not disingenuous. I'm always very, very sincere because I'm a great person. I would never tell a lie. It's like <laughs> I am. That's the that's the problem. In their efforts to show how wonderful and amazing they are, they will let the cat out of the bag on all kinds of other things. I find this very funny. Um, this is actually from an interview. Uh, Eugene Vidin Vidiniak, the Romanian lawyer defending Mr. Tate, said that his client had said many stupid things. Well, we all agree on that. <laughs> we can all agree on that one. But that after his arrest, he stopped thinking about Romania. He said this in in response to. Um, in response to them asking, didn't Andrew Tate brag about, uh, you know, benefiting from corruption and about how corrupt Romania is and why he and yeah, that was he stupid. Likes it for this reason, and his lawyer said, oh, my my client has said many stupid things in the past, but you know th th that changed. So <laughs> he now no longer thinks you guys are corrupt. He knows you're pretty, <laughs> he's you're pretty serious about all this stuff. He takes it back. He takes it back. <laughs> Oh boy! What a the the lawyers of this guy of these guys have a very tough job. If your clients are so dumb that they it's go out there stop. and say all kinds of ridiculous, incriminating stuff to the public, which they shouldn't be saying, and you are then okay. No, no, no. He he didn't mean to say that. No, he said a lot of stupid things. No, that was actually he he wasn't serious. If that's your job, wow! I feel bad for you, man. Pretty rough. <laughs> Oh boy. Not because, because, not because I haven't yeah. chosen to, but because it hasn't happened to me. Right. So that means it could happen. Yeah, either. absolutely. Right. Absolutely. You, you said so. The only thing I have ever heard come out of his mouth that I agree with so far is yes, it doesn't just happen to you. You don't just decide yeah. to convert. It just it happens. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you can agree with that. I'll agree with him talking about atheism and degeneracy. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> so interesting. You just said something earlier, real cool, real brief. You tweeted out, you said positive pregnancy test, question mark. Yes. Unsure what to do? This is the sign you were looking for. Oh, no, they're talking about abortion. I think yep, this now is... they're moving on to abortion. I think this is done with the section about Islam. Uh, yep. But what we have heard so far is what we've heard in this whole section is that his brother stopped drinking alcohol, which I don't want to assume anything, but I highly doubt. This is this reminds me of Sneeko, who said that he quit drinking because he converted to Islam. And Muslims were like, yeah, look at that. He's trying. Then just a week later or so, he talks to a girl on video and, and says, "I don't." she asks, do you drink? And he says, no. Oh, in, yeah, actually, I do. You know? <laughs> so... I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he maybe he did indeed quit. I, I'm not sure. I cannot know that. Uh, some some complete ignorance about Islam and Christianity. Complete misrepresentation of how Islam views Christians and Jews. Uh, what else is there? Be benefits for converting to Islam. That is the highlight that I think I'm, I'm very curious about, and I really want him to explain to us what exactly those benefits are. Yeah. One. Someone. Uh, um, when we talked about that, someone said in the chat the exact same thing happened to uh aj the british boxer i'm assuming that's anthony joshua but uh i i i guess i guess it's happened to aj hey why don't you convert to islam things could turn out very well for you i know two arab christian pastors who who were offered massive amounts of money for converting and then saying that they converted because they examined the bible and the quran and they found out that the quran is true um, so you do have people waiting to shower you with money if you say something, uh, uh, say something about positive about Islam. And that, there was that entire uh, Wall Street Journal article years ago, where uh, back in the '90s they had all these uh, partly funded by Osama bin Laden back there, um, but they uh, 
they had all these Western scientists that they were bringing to the Middle East and they would give them these uh, massively distorted quotations and say, hey, how could Muhammad have known this? The, the vast majority of the scientists said that doesn't look remotely impressive. Uh, but the, the few who actually said, yeah, I don't know how Muhammad could have known about that. These guys acknowledged that they were that their uh, va vacations were paid for by these guys and they were put up in the best hotels and given money and presents and showered with everything. And all they had to do was say something positive about Islam. And to this day, you can open up Muslim uh, Dawah books and it'll say, ah, and even Western scientists, when they were presented <laughs> with this amazing information, had to grant that Muhammad could only have known this uh, through, through miraculous means. And it's still used for Dawa when it's interesting because uh, what was that guy? The, the rationalizer, he interviewed these guys. So the Wall Street Journal went and found these scientists who said something positive. One of them called it mutual manipulation. They said, we got free stuff and all we had to do was say something about their religion. It's mutual mm -hmm. manipulation. So yes, in exchange for free vacations and so on, we will say something nice about your religion. Um, but the rationalizer had these guys on was saying, hey, once we why don't we look at the entire path? Do you really think there's anything miraculous here? They're saying, no, there's not. There's nothing miraculous here. <laughs> so but notice you have that going on where pe people wealthy, wealthy, oil rich people will gladly shower you with money or anything else you want. If you just say something positive about Islam and then the main the main work that's ever been used in this regard is Maurice Bukai's. Uh, book about the amazing scientific insights in the Quran. And this is a guy who worked for King Faisal. He worked for King Faisal. And then he comes out with this book on the amazing scientific miracles. And we he never converted. He never converted to Islam over this, but he put out the book. And we're, we know that there are people who are willing to pay people to do that. And so, yeah, nothing suspicious here going on, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, by the way, all of his deeds will be uh, swept away like nothing, and then he will go and uh, be punished with the rest of the disbelievers. So I don't know why these guys are referencing that guy here. Um, it's also funny to me, I don't know, if I was offered a lot of stuff to go to Saudi Arabia, I don't I don't think I would go to Saudi Arabia. Like, who, who would you be killed? Would... You mean if you were just a... No, no, if I was a random person. But oh, okay, if you're a random person. Who in the world wants to go to Saudi Arabia? Tuh, who doesn't? <laughs> it's only the coolest place in the world. <laughs> Even for benefits. But hey, Tristan Tate, I'm really interested to hear what kinds of benefits were offered to you and what kind of a what kind of a convert with, with benefits Andrew Tate, your brother is, and what kind of benefits he got. We got to make a video called "Converts with Benefits." That's too, and just just discuss that that trait that uh, that clip from Tristan, and then any examples of it. By the way, I'm going to read super chats now, and uh, in order to, I don't even know how to put this, but uh, please shower me with money, with gifts, with benefits, so that I can uh, do whatever you want me to do, everybody. Uh, which I will not eventually do because that's how, how good I am. You know, how disingenuous would it be of me to just do something for benefits? It has to happen on its own, out of my control. But yeah, just offer me a bunch of money. Uh, make a bunch of super chance. I don't know, $500, $1,000, $5,000. I don't know. I don't care. Uh, but yeah, anything else that you want to add before we go into the super chance, David? Um, no. No? Okay. 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 Um, a very quick question to you, just out of curiosity. If you were hypothetically offered uh, more money than you can ever think of by a sheikh in Dubai and uh, you know, guarantees income, all kinds of homes, whatever you want for the rest of your life, for your family and your, your, your kids, would you convert to Islam, David? Uh, no, you could... <laughs> You could offer me. You you could you could agree to make me king of the world to convert to Islam. Yeah, not happening. Yeah, I don't believe. Uh, <laughs> Amplified nonsense said, uh, David. Can you make a video explaining Ezekiel twenty three twenty? Um, maybe I don't know. At some point, I've always thought it was such a 
such a dumb argument if you just read it. Um, but that's the passage where they're talking about uh, God's talking about Israel. And he's basically saying, like, he's comparing it to finding a woman and taking care of her. And then instead of wanting to remain faithful to her husband, she goes, uh, she starts lusting after a donkey, right? And lusting after, lusting after a donkey. And they just quote out the part about this, about a woman lusting after a donkey. And they say, oh, how could this be in there? That's so disgusting, right? It's supposed to be disgusting. It's supposed to be the most disgusting thing ever because that's what God's saying. He's saying, me taking you, nation of Israel, and taking care of you, uh, that's like a man taking care of a woman and them, and them having a marriage. And then the woman, you, he's talking to Israel here, you then going out and wanting to go to idols and start worshiping other gods. That's like a man having a wife. And then she goes and, and lust after a, a donkey. That's how dis God is describing how disgusting that behavior is. So it's supposed to be the most disgusting thing you can imagine. Like your wife, all of a sudden one says, I really want to go. I I'm really turned on by that donkey out there. It's supposed to be the most disgusting thing you can imagine. God is telling them, this is what you're basically doing when you uh, go after these pagan gods and so on. Uh, but for some reason, Muslims would just look at it. And so the question for Muslims would be, um, uh, are you Muslims saying that it's not that bad? <laughs> are you saying that it's not, it, that, that that comparison is not true? That that a woman lusting after a donkey would actually be much worse than, because these are the same guys who say wishing Merry Christmas is, is worse than murdering people. Right. Um, so yeah, but uh, really all you have to do is read the passage. And so the only thing you can say is one, you could say, no, God taking a nation and forming a nation and taking care of a nation isn't as, and then that nation deciding to go worship pagan gods isn't as bad as a woman lusting after a donkey. So you can say it's not really that bad. I can't imagine a Muslim saying that because they would they would regard shirk or polytheism as worse than what as worse than a woman doing that. So I can't imagine them saying that it's not as bad. So the only thing you could say is, but God shouldn't say that it's that bad. God shouldn't use that kind of language to say how bad these practices are. But I mean, if you're going to say that, I mean, in your religion, you just slaughter everyone over doing this stuff. So wait a minute, you can slaughter everyone, but you don't give them a comparison to show them how bad it is. You slaughter them to show how bad it is, but you don't use a graphic example to show how disgusting a practice is. So um, yeah, it's, it's going to have to, I, I know Muslims still use it, but I don't know, maybe it's possible. It's possible to make of, a video out of it. This reminds me of Muslims saying, uh, Bible is so corrupt that they even uh, insult uh, prophet, prophet Lut, and depict him in, in such not a, even a prophet. He's not even yeah, a prophet in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. And again, it's supposed to it's supposed to be showing how how bad this is. Yeah. And they go, oh, how could you describe a prophet this way? <laughs> it, that's just ignorance. You know, it's just yeah. ignorance on the on on the behalf of Muslims, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> Cedric said, "So the Tate plus Islam more apostates." Yeah. I believe so. I believe so. I, I believe, believe so. so. I believe so. It's everything. Every decision the Dawa guys make is basically short-term gain, long-term loss. It's, ah, we can cling on this thing right now for popularity or something like that. Uh, we can tell a lie right now. We can make up an argument for Islam, and it might help you in the very short term. In the long term, it ex it exposes your true colors. and doesn't work out for you so he was in your he was an argument for islam actually david what you don't see is um islam is so wonderful so miraculous that rich people go out offering benefits to mm -hmm. others to convert to islam that's power how, of islam that's how great and how powerful islam is you see how could these guys be rich enough to do this if it weren't true <laughs> how could they want to give away all their money to random people if islam wasn't true this is the proof. <laughs> the proof. Man, if that just doesn't show how desperate the Islamic da'wah is, I don't know what else will. But I mean, think think about it. I mean, this all goes back to Muhammad when he was just saying, hey, there's only one God. He did not get a lot of converts. Once he said, hey, our new deal, um, everyone who fights for me, you either, you know, you either survive the battle or you don't. If you survive the battle, then you return home with war, with uh, with rewards and war booty. Or if you die, you go to paradise and you get to spend eternity deflowering virgins. Win-win. Right? But notice, either way, guys, it's 
it's to your benefit to convert, not because of some, not because of absolute oneness of Allah or anything like that. You're getting lots of stuff. You're either taking, you're either taking people's wives and daughters as your sex slaves, in which case you get to bone a lot of girls, or you go to paradise and you spend eternity deflowering virgins. That was Muhammad's method of winning. That's what gave him success at winning <clears throat> converts. We shouldn't be surprised that you know, 14 centuries later, they're still doing the same thing. Alhamdulillah. I thought you were going to no. do, a, do a word game here and uh, a word play here and say, if you die in battle, no, if you, if you, if you, uh, wait, what? If you win in battle, then you will get war booty. And if you die, then you will get, you will get virgin more booty. booty. Yeah. More war booty. booty or more booty, huh? War <laughs> booty or more booty. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> Uh, that's where my mind goes. The perfect Muslim, why to be consistent, right? Yeah, exactly. David and I, thank you, David and I. Chris K said, why would any would anyone like a baked tater with their halal dinner? <laughs> uh, yeah. What is it? What is a tater? What is a tater tot? What is a, what are those things? You don't I know don't, what a tater tot is? I don't even know what those things are. Uh, yeah, they're, 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 they're made from potatoes. You just put in a little ball and you bake it in the oven or if you're really cool you uh fry it in oil wait uh, is that what it is is that what it's called it's, it's like, called tater because it's potatoes yeah it's like a it's like a french fry but they actually like uh cut it up and then mash it into a uh like a cylinder shape and you huh. get a big bag of them and cook them up and i see it now i see the picture now I'm hungry. next next time you're hanging out with me i'll make you tater tots man fantastic okay I'm buying my tickets now. Um, Cedric said, where is your source for that? M Hijab 2023. <laughs> That's from that famous clip. Uh, hey, Muhammad Hijab, we understand that the Muslim position oh. is the Muslim position is perfect. Dot for dot, letter for letter. Uh, <laughs> what, what's your source for that? What's your source for that? <laughs> uh, you and all the scholars you've been quoting for years. Anyway. <laughs> um Jawad Farhad made a super chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate your contributions. Chris K said the Antichrist will look like a tate. Possibly. I've I've seen Muslims point that out. Uh, we, we've talked about it before. There was a tweet by a Muslim who said, "I've always been confused by claims that Muslims will actually follow the Antichrist," and he said it never made sense to me until I saw how Muslims rallied around Andrew Tate. Uh, and he said, I, I'm, I'm firmly convinced that as, as long as uh, someone comes along and says, I'm a Muslim and starts spouting uh, all kinds of misogynistic stuff, Muslims will, will rally around him. That, again, that came from a Muslim. I mean, the guy basically says, I am God. And Muslims are like, well, I'll give him time. He's still learning. Yeah, he doesn't know any better. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> wow, man. It's so messed up. It is so messed up. Uh, the taste confused prophets with prophets. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, St. Miles said Tate are from Clown World. Absolutely. Thanks, St. Miles, always. St. Miles. Christ is salvation. Say, God bless you both. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Desert Empire says Shake with Mine and Sneaker were live. You guys should definitely watch it. David is mentioned. Wait, Shake Ibn Fibbin? <laughs> Ibn Fibbin. I got ketchup all. I spilled ketchup from my, from my tater tots. And, uh, ah, the. The Islamophobes got me. <laughs> <laughs> he talked about he mentioned you. He did, he mentioned David and he didn't mention me this time. Yeah, that's a dirtbag move. How how? I thought he always mentions us together. Isn't it isn't it amazing? But notice it's the same thing we see with Andrew Tate. Once you are the hero of the Dawah community for any reason, you can do no wrong. I mean, this guy, I mean, non-Muslims call Sheikh Uthman Sheikh Ibn Smollett for faking a hate crime out of, out, about himself to get attention and then just flat out lying to Muslims saying, oh, yeah, and they got the guy, they got the guy and he's been arrested. And so someone eventually went, people went to, first people are contacting the police department. Hey, he says that, you know, this is being investigated and he's handed over the evidence and he's filed the reports and the guy's been arrested. The police department's going, we have no clue what you're talking about. We have no clue about any of this. And he's saying this guy's been prosecuting and he's in jail. And then people contact the prosecutors like we have no record of any of this. What in the world are you talking about? And but notice he will sit there and say to Muslims, does it matter in a mosque? Yes, I was attacked. He, I gave them the evidence. The man was arrested. He was prosecuted. He went to trial. He's in jail now. 
It's a complete lie. He will gladly lie to Muslims for attention. And it doesn't matter what he does as long as he is owning the unbelievers. They just don't care. Free pass on anything. Same as Andrew Tate. I find it outrageous to uh, imply that Sheikh Uthman would lie. So uh, I, I don't believe for a second that he made any of that up. I think that he is, of course, telling the truth. So I would I would just ask Sheikh Uthman to be uh, to do what is right and to show to all of these um, all of these all of these people out there, these enemies of Islam, that he was actually telling the truth to give us the receipts to go there on video and say, hey, didn't I come here and do this and this and this? and show all the data and i think that would be very beneficial for the ummah and for the kuffar as well dear sheikh uthman please no even before all of that he had tweeted out that he supports uh uh fighting and enslaving uh fighting unbelievers and enslaving their wives and so on he tweeted that and then it was brought up to him in a live stream and people ask, hey, what do you mean by that? What are you talking about? Are you actually supporting this stuff? And he's like, ah, yeah, when I wrote when I wrote that, blah, blah, blah. Or when, he said, when I said that, blah, 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 blah. And then later we bring it up to him and he says, no, 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 that was an assistant. He had nothing to do with that. And he got rid of that assistant for saying that awful thing that he doesn't agree with. And, uh, and so then we pointed out, wait a minute, you said in a live stream, yes, that was you. So one is from your account. You said that you said it. And then apparently he responded, but ah, I said, I said it, but I didn't say I tweeted it. Ha ha. And every step of the way, every step of the way, his fans agree with him. Like he can obviously be lying right to their faces and they will just, ha ha, he owned you all. He, he said he, he tweeted it. I mean, he didn't say he tweeted it. He didn't say he tweeted it. Oh, he said he said it. He yeah. didn't say he tweeted it. And this is, this will be the owning the unbelievers. And the, these are the guys they're left with as the champions this actually shows the power of islam once again and it is powerful it's extremely powerful um ba -ba 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 -bum. goldie said in what other religion can you possibly uh say completely contradictory things so much and have people believe you every single time you can't do this in any other religion this just shows the greatness of islam Alhamdulillah. Uh, goldie said just supporting the channel big love from south florida that is all thank you thank you thank you thank you i appreciate that I appreciate that. I will uh, do my duties by going down to Florida and uh, contributing to the climate of Florida. I, I, I don't know. But yeah, thank you. Sarah Rainey said, this isn't going to get you to convert. I still appreciate it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. St. Charmel, miracle worker, said, Tate will have a captive audience in prison for his course. Good luck finding a virgin in prison. <laughs> That's rough. That's rough. Captive audience in prison. That's an interesting choice of words. Uh, House of Hikma said, you know, AP, there's tons of benefits to converting to Christianity. <laughs> Gave you $4.99. Hmm. Yeah. You get paid, son. <laughs> I'll check that out. I'll get back to you. Uh, Yusuf Weezy said, can you get John Zerka on It Would Be a Blast? Now, um, I know a little bit about Zerka. Uh, he's of Albanian origin, comes from a Muslim family background, but he himself is not a Muslim. He's a Christian. Or I, I, to be very honest, to be very fair here, I think he says he believes in Christianity but he doesn't call himself a Christian because he he is very degenerate and he thinks it is not uh, fair of himself to call himself a Christian and it it, it would be um, he would be muddying the the image and the name of Christianity or something like that. So he only refers to people who actually observe their religion properly as Christians. And he says, I, I, I only believe I'm not really a Christian, which is very funny. That, that's a, that's a, there's a distinction here between a Christian attitude and a, a Christian attitude and a Muslim attitude where, um, where as a Muslim, you can do whatever in the world you want. You are just being, um, you know, propagated as a Muslim. You are a Muslim, even if you go out and, uh bang virgins three a year and join gangs and do all kinds of stuff and sell and buy drugs and do drugs 
But with Christianity, it seems to be a little bit different in this case, right? Becoming, being part of the religion or assuming the identity is different in these both religions. And you do actually, you have Muslims who are like that because Dave Chappelle says he believes in Islam, but doesn't go around saying it because he's not really living according to it. So mm -hmm. uh, you do have that, but yeah, it, it's, it's uh, what you find is that if someone does say, hey, I'm a Christian and I'm living completely, uh, completely in contrast with the teachings of Christianity, uh, you're not going to be propped up and celebrated for that sort of thing. But in Islam, you could you could have no concern at all for following anything Islamic, even be bragging that you're God. But as long as you say, oh, and Islam is true and I stop drinking, free pass, free pass on everything. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I wanted to say about about, about Zirka, um, I don't think I want to actually collaborate with that guy, <laughs> to be very honest. I think uh, he's just too, too far gone. <laughs> I would say from my point of view, too problematic, degenerate, toxic. I don't have an issue with degeneracy. Uh, no, you're an atheist. You're an atheist. It's, yeah. it's, it's your favorite on, thing. <laughs> depending on what degeneracy you're talking about. But uh, the guy is they're, just... They're interchangeable. Atheism and degeneracy. They're like interchangeable. They're synonyms. That's true. That's true. And I like degeneracy. Uh, but it <laughs> in in uh, when, when, we, when we talk about Zerka, he's just one of those people. I don't think I don't think I would be I would find it beneficial to have him here on my channel at all. Um, but yeah, he's somebody who brags about pretty messed up stuff. No, I'm mm. not going to do that. Uh, something I've wondered: uh, Why does Islam exist if, if even the Quran says the Bible and Torah is true? Why not just adopt Christianity or Judaism? Because Muhammad had to be the one. He had to be the one. He had to be sent to the to the ignorant people of Arabia who didn't know and who never had a prophet before. That's why Muhammad had to be sent to tell them, hey, hey, it's all going going down soon and I have come to warn you. That is one of the most important, what you just said is one of the most important and un, uh, misunderstood uh, facts about Islam is that uh, according to us, it's actually very simple. According to Islam, according to the Quran, Judaism and Christianity are just forms of Islam. Um, in other words, uh, you, they were all, they were all just worship of the one God, but Allah sent prophets to every nation in the world and gave people different revelations and so on, but they're all Islam and that Jews and Christians were, uh, corrupting their religion, not because their books are corrupted, but because they're, they're preaching falsehood with their mouths. But according to the Quran, Islam, in the sense of following Muhammad, Muhammad is the seal of the prophets just because he's the Arabs were the last people to get their revelation. Every other group in the world already had its revelation in its own language. The Arabs were the last people to receive their revelation. And so Muhammad is the seal of the prophets in the sense of he's just the last one. Now everyone's got their revelation. But Allah even asks in the Quran, Surah 5, verse 43, when Jews come to Muhammad to settle a dispute, Allah's response is, why are they coming to you when they have the Torah? It's, hey, that's their book. They need to judge by their book. Christians, 547 says Christians need to judge by the gospel. And it's Muhammad's followers who judge by the Quran. So the correct response according to the Quran is, if you are not an Arab, you should be following the revelation that was given in your language. It doesn't, it doesn't actually work because you go around saying, what are the revelations in these other languages? And the only thing they can point to is some, some books of the Bible, which they say they're forced to say have been corrupted because they don't line up with the Quran. So it's just, it's a big mess and there is no, there is no coherent position on this. Muslims just have to ignore what the Quran says about Judaism and Christianity and the previous scriptures and so on, because, uh, there's no way that it's a problem for them. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And yeah, yeah. Allah is like, hey, why is you Christians and Jews coming to my prophet proof? You have you, you got your own book in it. Yo, why is, why is them Jews coming to get them revelation from your Muhammad when they don't be needing these things? 
they's got their own book in it. In it. <laughs> uh, all right. I think that's it. I think that's it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Um, yeah, no, no. Um, yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, tomorrow we will be live on David Wood's channel to talk about. I'll be live twice. You will be definitely joining me at 8. You're welcome to join at 5. At 5 o'clock, I'm going to have um, uh, someone who's uh, written a journal article on the history of the text of the Quran. He's going to be joining me or us, whatever, however things turn out tomorrow. And then at 8 o'clock, I'm thinking we looked at Ali Dawa's first video where he announced briefly that the scientific miracles argument has been debunked. We're going to take a closer look at his follow-up video where he doubled down, blasted it and said, uh, of course, the argument from scientific miracles, uh, of course, that's been completely debunked. It's a joke. Uh, it's lame. It's horrible. Uh, and he says his, the new, the new reason for converting to Islam is he specifically says it, the intolerance of Islam. So of Islam. his new argument for Islam, the real reason people should be converting is intolerance. And notice that's the exact same, that's the exact same position that, you know, a neo-Nazi could argue for, right? <laughs> ah, the reason you should be a neo-Nazi, the reason you should join the KKK is because, of, hey, we're intolerant. So, you know, you're attracted to intolerance, aren't you? That's the new Dawa. <laughs> and it's just, this is proof that new Nazism is the truth. <laughs> you see? It's very, it's very good that they that they have adopted uh, the great God, uh, Andrew Tate's uh, message of intolerance is good. Therefore, Islam is uh, the correct religion to pick. Uh, that's fantastic. Alhamdulillah, uh, Andrew Tate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Powerful. Fantastic. 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 Alhamdulillah. All right. Uh, uh, ben West said Dan Gibson was on with Al Fadi, and he said Unletter didn't mean Mo was illiterate, but that the Arabs didn't have a book. Yeah, that's one of the interpretations. Yeah, yeah there. I, I, when I'm describing Muhammad, I will refer to him as an illiterate seventh century Arabian caravan robber, but that is mainly just because. Muslims use it as an argument, like how could someone who was completely illiterate know these things? In the Muslim sources, there are serious reasons to question whether Muhammad was illiterate. There are reasons to think that he wasn't. But um, you can point that out when that's being discussed. Was he really, uh, was he really, does unlettered mean illiterate there? Um, but uh, as long as Muslims keep bragging about it, I'll keep throwing it in their faces. Alhamdulillah. And with that said, uh, Cole said, good night, Blackstone worshiper. Uh, and somebody said dollar, dollar, dollar. Somebody said ha, 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 ha. Cha-ching. Uh, Cha-ching. And uh, yeah, everybody, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, we will stay active and see what happens next. Uh, oh, we, we almost had a had a civil war in Russia going on and people were talking about. about yeah, that was interesting. War. Yeah, and uh, which is, which, I'm kind of sad that nothing happened. I was kind of happy that things are getting out of control and there was going to be chaos. And so finally, that was, I mean, that was interesting. That leader of the leader of the uh, the mercenary group turns and starts heading towards Moscow after taking over the city. Of, I mean, my goodness, yeah. that looked like that was going to be really interesting. And then, and then everyone's saying, ah, but Putin's just going to crush this dude. But then this dude calls on the Russian National Guard to side with him. And deep, I was like, gosh, this is. And the National Guard, they were actually, uh, they, they, are, they are marching through cities and the guards are standing down and not stopping them, mostly, and or, or just surrendering. So it, it, it seemed really, Putin was really uh, in trouble and he was, I think, he, he was getting loose uh, stools. But the president of, the dictator of Belarus uh, came together and made a truce with, the, with those people. For the betterment of the Russian people, uh, yeah. But people were talking about uh, nuclear war again, which was really, really messed up. And I don't have much against nuclear war. The only thing, the worst thing about nuclear war is I don't it, have much against nuclear war. <laughs> the worst thing about nuclear war is is that people start pronouncing nuclear as nuclear. Yeah, that that is the worst thing about nuclear war. Yeah, you had. I mean, you had presidents who. I mean, 
Uh, Jimmy Carter couldn't pronounce it. I think George W. used to say nuclear. Yeah, terrible, terrible. Nuclear. That is, that, says, is, yeah. that is worse than any damage that could possibly result from a nuclear war. Nuclear, <laughs> nuclear weapons. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, I'm glad. I'm glad to see that uh, things didn't go really bad. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a fantastic night and day and uh, midnight sun, and we will see you again on the next episode of the most watched show on the planet, Apostate News. And for now, I will leave you alone with a very profound message by one individual who's known as Sajid Lippin. Thank you. Stay away from Islam. Okay.